Foundation at the Rebound All-Star Game here in Southampton. John Hobbs and Lapa Riders guard Alia Al Shabri will be joining you for the Skills Challenge, which will start momentarily as Vince McCauley and Rebound blogger Chris Hughes, who has organized this event, just giving uh, some words of praise. And Alia, it's great to have you on board. There is the schedule for today. So 2.15, the three-point contest. 3.15, the women's all-star game. Five o'clock, the dunk contest. And six o'clock, the men's all-star game. But of course, now it is the skills challenge. And Alia, you've been saying to me that you've been looking forward to this all week long. In fact, it's probably been longer than that. Just how do you feel being here? Obviously, unfortunately, not in competition. Um, of course, suffering an injury in the playoffs, but how are you feeling nonetheless? I'm excited. I'm excited. Like like you said, this is what I've been talking about probably longer than a week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I've been uh, talking a lot of uh, a lot of uh, game to everybody, and uh, I've already bet on a couple of people. I won't tell <laughs> you who they are right now, but all I'm saying is Team Blue. Team Blue, they're right on the screen in front of you right now. That's who you gotta. That's how. You, that's who you gotta cheer for. <laughs> so right. So the skills contest is due to begin at any moment now. We're going to go through the rules very quickly. So each player will start at the baseline. Once the buzzer starts, each player must dribble through six cones that are located across the court. You can probably see them on the screen right now. After the cones, each player will throw a chest pass or a bounce pass. The uh, I bounce think it's pass. One of each. It's one of each. Yeah. So the the chest pass will be the one nearest us, I believe. Which is uh, on your, which is closest to your screen. The, the bounce pass will be further to your screen near the bench. So there are three attempts at each passing station. If you do not make it on the three passes, you just move on to the layup. The ball must completely go through the passing circle, and players must not cross their passing line. So after passing, the players will get the ball from a volunteer, sprint down the other side of the court for the layup and then they switch sides and then round two begins. It's almost like a role reversal of what they did. So we will go through the rules as it happens. I think, to be honest, it's very self-explanatory. I think as well, Molly Danielson of Solent Kestrels will be giving a quick demonstration. Lauren Dabbs <laughs> and Earl Thompson are gonna have a practice match. Come on, Dabbs, let's go. <laughs> I've got a side with Earl Thompson. If you're selling, if you're oh, going with Lauren, I'll go with Earl then. We'll go is there. my guy. He's my teammate <laughs> last year. So there it is. So we're going to test now. It's very similar to the. Oh, he missed. Very similar to the NBA Skills Challenge. If you're familiar with that during All Star Weekend. What do you think is the best technique to get the bounce pass in? Because I was like, the chest pass is all right, but the bounce pass that looks kind of hard to be fair. It's kind of far I away. I thought, to be honest, the bounce pass would have been the easier one because it's really? close. It's closer, but oh we'll yeah, it see. is. So each player gets three attempts. Oh yes, Lauren. There is! Lauren gets it first time. Earl letting us down there. <laughs> <laughs> it's because he's got a red shirt on. <laughs> Wrong color, buddy. But Earl, not necessarily one of the best three-point shooters. Hey! Lauren Dabbs, of course, one of the leaders in the WNBL in three-point attempts. Bang, bang, baby! <laughs> hitting her three. So Lauren has beaten Earl Thompson, so already the WNBL with the advantage today. Of course, the three-point contest will be NBL versus WNBL today. So that will be fun to watch, no doubt about it. So it's very similar Woo! to how it is. That's my captain. Yes, Robin. <laughs> As Robin Ainge from the Loughborough Riders. Oh, Amber Dean. Amber Dean, of course. M WNBL Division One MVP Amber Dean in pink. Uh, going up against Robin Ainge of Loughborough Riders. So here we go. Alia, I might just give the mic to you on this one. <laughs> I, ooh, strong start. Yes, Robino. <laughs> oh, that's kind of close. So here we go. So Robin. Oh, go on, go on. Robin with the chest pass. Dean is, Amber Dean is going for the, the bounce pass. Yes! <laughs> oh, give her a ball. Give her a ball. Oh, my Robin goodness. Robin Ainge now going for the layup. Amber Dean's already got her. So this is it. Round two yes, now begins. Robin. Come on, Amber. So Amber Dean now is in the lead right now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, this is where. 
First time. So Amber D now with a three-pointer to win this and go through to the final. Go, go, go! Robin Ainge now following. Amber Dean another three. Ainge now puts up a three, oh, is off. On. It's all on the three-point attempt. Money! And there it is! Yes, sir! <laughs> That's my shooting! That's my shooting! <laughs> Woo! So Robin Ainge is through. Yes, Robin. Are they not taking it time? I'm not. Top four times went through. Or is it it might be that. I we were told we were to, we were told it was head to head. You're probably right. I make stuff up sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> However, we've got to understand that this incredible event today, two months planning in the making. It's only been two months, so the job that Chris Hughes has done, absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely, absolutely. He's been awesome throughout the whole like process of talking to absolutely. us. Absolutely. And everybody's just like. It's been like, oh, Chris is an awesome guy. But now it is Solent Kestrel against Solent Kestrel. This is a win-win for me because it's blue. Whoever it's wins, blue. blue. So, so far, blue, we got one win there. <laughs> Taylor Gaffney and Faye Endine. Faye Endine closest to you with the chest pass. Taylor Gaffney Ooh, with yes, the bounce Faye. pass. Faye Endine now. Oh, give it a bomb. Go, go, go. Yes, Faye. Going for the left. So Taylor Gaffney actually is slightly in the lead right now. See, the but Gaffney now. misses the layup. Faye Endy makes her. Oh, so second on, round Faye. now begins. The tactic is miss three passes very quickly. Then <laughs> it seems that do. way right now, doesn't it? Miss it very quickly and then run. But there you go. Nope. Both players not having an issue oh. with the uh, chest pass. Let's go. Ooh. Both players good, good three that point shooters. Both teams missed them. Both players missed their first, and oh. Taylor Gaffney misses her second. Let's go, let's go. Oh, and there yes, you go. Hey. So Taylor Gaffney makes her attempt. Oh, Taylor's just been awesome, like the second half of this season, stepping up for Solent and just coming in after, obviously, Molly got hurt, unfortunately, in the final. You were there. Yeah. But she's been good for them, she's been great. But Molly has been absolutely incredible since that injury, staying with the team, home and away game. She's there on the bench, supporting her team. She's been doing it all season and long and doing it here. Team for me too. Absolutely. Like when I got hurt, Molly was like always talking to me, yeah. making sure I was all right because she went through a similar injury, mm. obviously. So it was great having her. So come it's on, Kat. Pink, pink against pink here. Catherine Hulme of Angela Ruskin closest to us. Christina Velke Cleave. On the far side for the Kestrels and Velky Cleave going off to a fast start. Ooh, Katrin okay, Hall okay. is not even bothering oh, she going around. The <laughs> God. It's close now. She has so a big start. So Christina Velky Cleave ooh, makes ooh, no ooh. mistake. That went in. That went yeah, in. that went in. Yeah. So now oh, three point three attempt point. now. Both players ooh. naturally good three point shooters. Everybody in our league. Absolutely. Can shoot. They can all shoot. Difficult trying to guard anyone. Katrin Holm, though, who drove here herself, oh, still here. still missing the three. Oh, yes, Kat. Velky Cleave now attempting another three pointer. That's off the back iron. And Velky Cleave oh, makes hers. Come on, so Kat. Katrin Hulme makes hers as well. Yep. Let's go, let's go. I think Robin was the fastest so far. It would seem that way, yeah. Looks like it. So, Love all bro, players. Make them different. All, play <laughs> all players in this skill contest have now had their first round. So, Robin Ainge won the first. Taylor Gaffney won the second. In fact, no, excuse me, Faye Endy, I think, won the second. And. Uh, Christina no, it Velke Cleave. It was Taylor, it was actually. Taylor. Excuse me. And Christina Velke Cleave won that. So a heavy Solent influence in this uh, next round. If you've just joined us on the Rebound channel, welcome everyone. Hope you can hear us as well on the live stream. If you can't hear me, at least you can hear Alia, who is. The ultimate hype girl for this event, no doubt about Absolutely. it. Team Blue all the way for Alia. <laughs> so here we go. Next round, Faye Endine and Robin Ainge going head to head. It's Let's blue go. against blue. 
And here we go. Look at that squeaking change <laughs> of direction. Oh! oh. <laughs> so Robin Ainge makes it. Don't now Robin Ainge. Up, Robin o. Oh, yes. Alia and uh, Loughborough Riders teammate there, Robin Ainge. Faye Andy now going for her layup. Robin Ainge is miles ahead at the moment, but Faye Andy now catching up. Go, home go, 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 the go, go, hometown go. girl, Have Faye Andy. <laughs> Robin Ainge a three. Oh, come That's on, come on. Off left, she goes again and Bang! strings it. <laughs> yes, sir! Robin Ainge. Woo! Hits on her second attempt, so she's through. Yes, Robbie, no. That was close, though. That's really close. So now, next round. So it, it is actually, I think, the quicker one. So Amber Dean and Taylor Gaffney now yeah. going head to head. That makes more sense. That makes Absolutely. Sense. So much Ooh. for the voices in your head there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they're right. <laughs> Ooh, both of them. So and Medine makes no mistake on her second attempt. Taylor Gaffney collecting the ball. Oh, it's close, it's close. Gaffney makes the layup. Amber Dean Ooh, just about makes in. hers. Oh, it's close, it's close. That comes off the table from Gaffney. Oh, yes, makes Tay. it there. Come on, Team Blue. <laughs> come on, Team Blue. Come on, Tay. Taylor a three. Oh, come on. Here comes Amber Dean. Amber's a good shooter. As oh! is Taylor Gaffney, though. Come on, come on. Another three, yes, and there goes. <laughs> Blue, baby! Blue! So that's Taylor Gaffney Woo! getting the win there over Amber Dean. And already the hype is real for this right now. Team Blue, Team Blue. <laughs> Crowd still filtering in all day. They will be all day long. This is an all day event. If you've just joined us on the Rebound Basketball Blog channel, oh, welcome everybody. Again. Let's go. So Robin. Is this the final? Oh, was, I think it is. This is the final, yeah. Oh. So Robin Ainge. So Blue are winning. Blue have won this. And already, it's already the high, game. already it's first blood to Alia against Katrin. I told you, Kat. <laughs> Robin Ainge against yes, Taylor Robin! Gaffney. Robin misses the first on the bounce pass, as does Gaffney. Yeah! Both make their attempts. Go, 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 go! Gaffney, probably slightly quicker of the two, makes the layup. As does Ainge. Here we go, second round. Oh, this pass is going to be important. Oh, in and out. Yes, Robin! But Robin Ainge makes it. Come on now. Come on, Tay. Robin Ainge all alone for three. Come Off on. right. Gaffney, her first attempt in and out. Oh, they're going for it. And oh, Taylor Gaffney hits. The hometown tough. girl wins. <laughs> That's the, a good shot. That's, that was a tight, that was a tight race. The hometown girl, Taylor Gaffney of Solent Kestrels wins the skills Team challenge. Blue. Team Blue. But more importantly, Alia, Team Blue, Thank first you. blood to Team Blue. <laughs> Don't hit me like that, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. So there you go. That ends the first event of this rebound all-stars challenge and congratulations to taylor gaffney who dances her way to yes, victory hey. but ali what a great start great start to what will be a great know, day of action i know we had three team blue people in the semi-final that's more than half yeah yep that's more than half <laughs> oh yeah that's and half 100 <laughs> team blue in the finals absolutely great to have more some... to come more wins to come cat I'm talking to you. <laughs> Listen to this back when you're done. We're going to win. So hopefully we'll get a word in with the winner, Taylor Gaffney, who's waiting with Molly Danielson. I'm hoping we'll get some chats in here. I can see him talking. So... We are looking to go to Molly and Taylor, who join us, hopefully will join us now 
for uh, some post skills reaction. Molly Danielson and I'm here with Taylor Gaffney the winner of the skills challenge Taylor Gaffney represents team Sunlink Kestrel she's came in halfway through season and made a huge impact with the high stats of 18 points per game I think five assists per game and all that good stuff right now Taylor how do you feel that you just won the skills challenge yeah it feels good it was a great competition I had a lot of fun shout out to Molly for creating all this man she got to get creative and it was amazing great skills competition have you ever done an all-star thing like this back in the States? You came from NCAA Division Three. Did you have anything like this? No, we haven't. Like, we've had other things like that, that uh, like to hype up our season, mm -hmm. but we haven't really had an all-star game or like all-star activities like this before. So to be doing something like this, especially out the country, is amazing. Yeah, how does it feel being an American in this all-star? You know, it's British basketball. It's a little yeah. different than back home, but how does it feel that you're in the all-stars here in another country? Yeah, no, it feels amazing. Like the fact that they, you know, took the time to go ahead and recruit me and do this whole process just to get me here and I get to still play the game that I love so much. So it's been great, the atmosphere is great, the people's amazing, and I can't wait for the rest of the game. Yes, and now how are you feeling that you're going into the game? The game starts in what, two hours? So yeah, how are you feeling? Now, yeah, I'm feeling good. I got to, got to get some shots up, you know what I'm saying, a couple reps in, but yeah. it was good. The atmosphere is great, DJ's got it banging, so we're having a great time. Yeah, so what, what are we looking for for you in the All-Star game though? What's the last thing, what, what shot, what play? I don't know. I think I'm trying to come with some tricky passes. Okay. I'm trying to, okay. I'm trying to get in my bag a little bit, with a little, maybe between the legs, behind the back kind of thing. So I'll keep y'all interested. Okay. Hey, Taylor can do it all. So be looking out for that for the All-Star game later. But thank you, Taylor. Thanks, Winter guys. Skills Challenge. Thanks, Molly. Thanks, Taylor. It's uh, a great start to this Rebound All-Star event. And, of course, after the Skills event, we'll have the three-point shootout, the mixed gender competition coming up next. That's sponsored by Kent Baller and for everyone in attendance today, their stall is looking really fire right now. So many sneakers on sale. I'm trying my best not to get the credit card in action. Ali, just a final word from you. A great start to today. Just your thoughts on the day coming up. I'm excited. I'm excited. That was that just got all the energy flowing. Mm. I think the three point contest is going to be good. My money's on the girls. Just saying, but it's going to be good, fun to watch. Yeah, and about the shoes, I gave uh, my friend my credit card, so uh, I'm being responsible. <laughs> I'm being told I can't. Yeah, I, I'm not allowed. I've been banned from my credit card sales today, so I'm on your boat. <laughs> but, um, Alia, thank you so much for joining us here today, and obviously good luck in the women's game. You're going to be head coach Absolutely. for your team today. Absolutely. Um, unfortunately, CJ Lee unable to make it due to personal issues so I th you know I hope uh, CJ is okay but um, leading team blue not on the court unfortunately but you'll be leading the girls I'm still there yeah <laughs> like I hope everything's good with CJ but I got it I got it you got him right now absolutely <laughs> I got it right now I got I got told this morning and before Molly could even finish the sentence Everything was ready. <laughs> Starting five, our defense, our offense. It's going to be awesome. Love it. Absolutely love it. Alia, thank you so much for joining us, and good luck today. Thank you for having me. Thanks. So my thanks to the Skills Challenge, and we will be back in around six to seven minutes' time, hopefully that time, for the three-point contest. Don't miss it. should be fun. We'll see you in a bit. Stick around.
Hello everyone, welcome back to the Rebound All-Star event here at the Solent Sports Complex in Southampton. The next event up next is the three-point contest sponsored by Kent Baller. Get all of your sneaker apparel, basketball wear from Kent Baller, a fantastic independent company. And most of the NBL players and WNBL players most certainly get their game day kicks from there. I am joined in this three-point contest by Nottingham Hoods, Carl Jimenez, who will, of course, be in the men's all-star game later on. Carl, welcome. Great to have you here on board today. Just you know, first thoughts on what you're feeling here being in Southampton for this great event. Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's going to be a great event. Right? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think as a whole, like Chris putting this all together, it's just great for the league and just bringing players together within the league, like mixing both genders as well. I think it's going to be a massive impact in how the league's going to progress in future years. Absolutely. And the three point contest this year or for this inaugural event is a mixed gender competition. There are eight players involved in this. So we'll just run them through very quickly. Andre Arasol of the Solent Kestrels, Jack Burnell of uh, Hemel Storm, Zaire Taylor and Tom Ward both of the Worthing Thunder. Of course, Zaire now a uh, near happily retired player, I, I must add. Um, and on the WNBL side, Eleanor Bishop of Thames Valley Cavaliers, Izzy Bunyan and Denisa Molnar of Cardiff Archers and Christina Karpova of the hometown Solent Kestrels. So just a quick rundown of the rules before we start, hopefully we'll start in a few minutes. Jack Bunnell just getting a few shots up. He was a, a bit late getting here, but he is here nonetheless. Each player will get a time slot of likely two minutes. Um, they'll run it back though, as there are only two ball racks, but we'll, uh, we'll guide you through as it goes. So eight players taking part, four ladies, four guys. Two shooters with the highest score will go into the final and they will go again for the final round. The winner will receive a welcome or a gift pack from Kent Baller, of course, who are sponsoring this event. And Kyle, I can already see from your face just a little bit jealous you're not in this. Uh, it's less, like, don't get me wrong, the competitive nature comes out of me. But I think the group that they've got together is going to be great for this competition from both sides. Like, there's got a lot of great shooters from the men's and women's side. Mm. I think you're looking at some of the elite shooters right here. And like you can't you can't really argue with that I don't think. So we'll just go through some of the the players just in, in detail. Andre Arasol, of course, a good three point shooter this uh, this season. Behind Cole Gentry, in terms of percentage, thirty six percent from the field. And Jack Burnell of Hemel, you know, just playing in spots this season, but playing great when he's on the court. Thirty three percent shooter. When that guy gets hot as well. He gets hot, and uh, Zaya Taylor, Tom Ward, of, of course, two players you you know very you know you know very well, big three point shooters in their right. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think like the league's going to definitely miss Zaya. I don't necessarily think I'll miss him <laughs> playing against them all the time, but uh, yeah, no, Tom, elite shooter, Zaya, mm. deadly from when he crosses half court. To be honest. Mm. Absolutely. We're going to bring Jerry in to this one as well, because obviously Jerry being uh, the Solent Kestrels game day announcer, um, the, you know, knowing an encyclopedic knowledge on Solent over the years, Andre Arasol <laughs> in this. Also as well, Christina Karpova uh, in this as well. Christina Karpova, 30% from the uh, foul, uh, from the uh, three-point line. Her career best was 32% in the 2019-20 season just before COVID. What are you making of both Andre and Chrissy? Well, I think if we talk about Chrissy first of all, I think, you know, real streak shooter. You know, you'll see her start off games and she won't hit the first three or four and then all of a sudden she can hit the next five, six, seven shots in, in really rapid time and put you out of the game before you even know it. Mm. And Andre, you know, just, just pull up anywhere really. Um, you know, is capable of making the shot. You know, nice quick release shot, nice arc on it, um, super accurate. So, um, so yeah, looking forward to seeing um, how they fly the hometown flag. Absolutely, and flying the hometown flag, but on the Welsh side, I know obviously Carl being a, 
a proud Scotsman, of course, Cardiff's uh, Denisa Molnar and Izzy Bunyan, of course, Denisa from Romania, but playing for Cardiff Archers in the Welsh capital this season. And, and two players really skilled, of course, you know, you yourself, Carl, a good three-point shooter in your own right, but for them, you know, good three-point shooters there uh, from Cardiff. Yeah, definitely. I think they're going to have a great competition today and just the likes of Izzy Bunyan. I got to see her at Commonwealth Games qualifiers mm -hmm. up in Scotland pretty recently and she was very impressive for that Welsh 3-3 three three team, especially at such a young age. Mm. And of course, you on a personal standpoint want uh, a certain, I know we spoke about Christina Karpova, but uh, Chrissy to do well, of course. When you were at Charnwood, she was a Loughborough, a rider, Loughborough a University student and a warden, I believe, at uh, your dorm, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when I, when I was at uh, Charnwood Basketball Academy, um, we had like a, a, a team house and Christina at that point was playing for the university team and was one of the wardens so it was a, it was a completely different relationship but uh, <laughs> yeah I've, I've got a little bit of ties to Christina in terms of like supporting her just from the Loughborough standpoint. Yeah. Maybe you're maybe you're just being forced into supporting and maybe I don't know. I, 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 who knows? I yeah, know. I mean, <laughs> if, we're go, if we're going by that, uh, John Andre is also <laughs> a former Charmwood basketball candidate. Yeah, he was. Night. Yeah, absolutely. No, definitely. Of course, Zaya Taylor, a former Leicester Riders player, in his right when he was there. So a lot of. Uh, Leicester and Loughborough connections in this three-point contest as Vince McCauley, as you see, our fantastic, hard-working volunteers there that have been working all morning long and uh, are still here today. So here we go with the three-point contest. Vince McCauley, our game day announcer. I'll tell you, Vince doing a really good job as a game day announcer. He did do it in his uh, stints with the London Lions when he was coach chairman he was doing everything back then yeah <laughs> top level all rounder absolutely great to see him still involved in british basketball and involved in this rebound all-stars event here today in southampton as uh, he is announcing the players involved in this of course that's andre arasol jack Bennell, zaya taylor tom ward Eleanor Bishop, Izzy Bunyan, Christina Karpova, and Denisa Molnar. It is a mixed gender three point contest sponsored by Kent Baller. So, as said, we'll uh, just run through the rules one more time. Each player will get a set time. It is likely to be two minutes. There might be, it might have changed within the last hour or so, but um, eight players obviously taking part, two shooters with the highest score. So, that's the top two. We'll go straight through to the final and the winner will receive a prize donated by Kent Baller. And I know me and Carl will probably be running down looking to maybe steal that at, at some point. I don't know. Yeah, I know I'll be looking to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to lock you in this commentary room and I'm going to be down there first. <laughs> Not if I were. Actually, you've got, you've got the front door right ahead of you, actually. I'm, I'm at a disadvantage. Either way... So we are starting, it seems, with Eleanor Bishop. So Bishop makes the first. So it's a starting minute 30 off, seconds. For three. Oh. Eleanor Bishop feeling it from downtown in the Ooh. corner, but uh, she goes to the next side. There we go. Off the back iron with that one. Struggling on this side. She made her first, oh, makes the, that one. There's another one. Now, this is what you could say is Bishop's favourite spot. Likes it at the top, makes the first. Maybe the commentator's curse just Comment coming out. Yeah, I was going to say commentator's <laughs> curse. I was perfect all week in Manchester a couple weeks ago. <laughs> there you go. Back to back solid, threes there. Solid but three for five on that spot. Eleanor Bishop, second season with Thames Valley. 30% from downtown this season, so a good three-point shooter. But as Alia mentioned in go. the skills challenge, all WNBL players can shoot the three exceptionally well. So here we go in the corner, final side. She's currently got 12 points at the moment, makes that one. Let's hope for a strong finish. There's another one. 15 seconds left, so a there lot of go. time. So she ends. I believe with 15. 
So Eleanor Bishop got 15 in the first round there. So a good score, very solid start yeah. from Eleanor Bishop to start off this mixed gender three point competition. 100%. I don't think if I was in this competition, I'd be wanting to come up second after someone coming up <laughs> with 15 to start it. It's probably a good advantage to start off first yeah. as well, isn't it? There's no pressure if you go first, is it? Absolutely. There? So Izzy Bunyan from Cardiff Met Archers will come up 17 year old, made her WBBL debut for Cardiff under Steph Collins when she was just 15 years at 15 years old. So a really talented up and coming star here in Izzy Bunyan. Looking confident as ever, as you can oh, see yeah. there. <laughs> and here she goes. No worries at all. Starting off hot. Strings the there first. Another one. And there's another one. Nice release on the three-pointer. Yeah, she doesn't look phased at all. Most players do like that baseline three-pointer as well as the top of the key. Here we go again. So right now, Izzy Bunyan with five. Way short on that attempt. Got a couple in here. Yep, there we there go. There you go. And now we go to the top. Misses the first. Bit more legs right now. There we go. Still a lot of time. She's got 45 yeah. seconds left to shoot them. I feel like at the moment, these guys are getting off to pretty rush starts. Like, take, Absolutely. Take, take a second. Just take a deep breath, set your feet yeah. and release. There you go. Oh, nearly got that one to drop. There we go. Such a talented player this season, really excelling in the WNBL with Cardiff under Sarah Wagstaff. Here we go, heating up, going into the last spot. Oh, Nearly got almost. the Solent Sports Complex roll to drop, but didn't get it. 15 seconds, she has 10 points here. Make that 11. There we go. Needs a run here. Oh, let's go. Six seconds, final one, I believe that was, and yep. she gets it to go. So Izzy Bunyan ends after a strong start, ends with 13 points. So Eleanor Bishop in the lead still with 15. And now it's time for Christina Karpova of the Solent Kestrels, a player. Oh, she wants to start on the other side. And she, yeah, she wants to start on the other side this time. She's definitely been practicing this at training. <laughs> Fourth season with Sona, of course, a former Loughborough rider, Christina Karpova. As mentioned, a 30% three-point shooter this season, a career best of 32% just before the pandemic hit. As uh, Christina just having a, a quick laugh and a joke, I believe that was with Andre Arasol on the far side. <laughs> Now you see Christina Karpova patiently waiting as Earl Thompson there of the Solent Kestrel second team getting ready to pass the balls to her. And here we go, minute 30 on the clock. Oh, started off a bit too strong there. But makes the second. One for two. And the third. Oh. So Karpova with two points to start off on the first round. Here she goes again. There we go. Strings that one. Once Christina gets going as well, she's one of the best three-point shooters in the WNBL. Yeah, definitely. I think I think right now everyone just needs to take a second. Like everyone's everyone's finished this this competition so far with a lot of time on the clock. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, at least 15 seconds on the clock yeah. for both Eleanor Bishop and Izzy Bunyan when they've had their goes. So Eleanor Bishop right now has 15. Izzy Bunyan has 13. Karpova currently oh, on Christi eight. Christina's on fire now. And there it goes. This is what we we're talking about with Karpova. Last spot, strong last spot here. So she's currently on nine points, 25 seconds left. Hits that one. Strong finish needed for Christina Karpova, currently on 11. And there oh, it is. off on 12. So Christina Karpova with 13 
in that round. So Eleanor Bishop hangs on to her lead. Denisa Molnar of the Cardiff Med Archers is to come. So Denisa Molnar now running up. She will go to the opposite spot to where Christina Karpova started. Don't know if that was just a ploy of Chrissy yeah. Karpova there just to start differently, but... I'm not sure. I don't know what side I'd like to start on, to be honest. I'm not a massive fan of the corner three. More of that uh, that top top of the yeah, top of the line well, three. Especially transitioning to the one. I Absolutely. Really, I'm never yeah. really in the corner anymore. <laughs> just bring the ball yeah, up. Just, yeah, just spot bring up the ball the three. Up, <laughs> throw it to another one of my shooters. <laughs> one of them can shoot. None of your Nottingham Hoods teammates will ever get the ball if you brought it up like that. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> bring it up, dribble straight into the corner, shoot a three. So here I think we are. Uh, Big Mo would have some words with me with that. <laughs> He's going to be joining you in that men's game later on. He might have some words to say before you even start. Yeah. So here we go. <laughs> Denisa Molnar will get the final lots of the WNBA players underway. She hits the first, hits okay. the second. Denisa Whoa. Molnar, a right. former Romania junior. There we go, four for five to start. Four for five, good start for Denisa Molnar. Averaged more three points, shot more threes in a game than anyone this season on average. I was going to say, you can tell just from this competition. That's just in the WNBL. 31% from downtown this season, averaging around 14 points a game. Hits oh, another one. Go. Another Rattles one. Rattles in that one. So Denise one Amona more. One more. getting it to go. Final, not even on the final round, and she's on 11 right now. Nails that there one. We go. And another. She's got this. Oh, Denise Molnar is feeling it. And she's taken the lead. She's, she just takes the time on this last spot. She'll be all good. Denise Molnar has now automatically jumped into the leader's position. There we go. Bangs one in more. another one. Last shot. There we Gets go. it to go. So Denisa Molnar has entered pole position 19 in the first round. That's a brilliant score for uh, Denisa Molnar. So she has overtaken Eleanor Bishop, who was the previous leader with 15. 19 is a tough score. That's a tough in. score. The men have got a tough act to follow. Yeah. Do you reckon the men are going to get a little warm up oh. there? Or are they expected just to go straight into it? See Andre shooting down Andre the other end. Andre yeah. Andre Arasol down the other end. <laughs> he's not Andre. going to be shooting from that close. So I was going to say, he's, take he's a step back. Might as well try and get in the dunk contest if he wanted to. <laughs> so it's all to play for now. So the women have had their attempts. Christina Karpova and Izzy Bunyan each with 13. Elena Bishop with 15. Leading the way, though, Denisa Molnar with 19. So it's just a toss-up to see who comes first in this. Looks like Zaya Taylor will, <laughs> will take uh, his threes wearing tracksuit bottoms and a hoodie. That's that's just that's a, typical Zaya. That's a very, <laughs> very Zaya thing to do. Normally, I, I was almost expecting him to rock up with his... Uh, pink dressing gown on for yeah, these three-point attempts. Yeah, dressing gown. <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. And that either, wouldn't have honest. surprised me and it either. wouldn't surprise me if he won it in that either. <laughs> so the men are to come. Jack Bunnell of Hemel Storm, Zaya Taylor, Tom Ward of the Worthing Thunder, just along the M27, and the hometown man, Andre Arasol of the Kestrels. Not sure what the holdup here is at the moment, but um, I think it's just to they, count they how just many balls we got. Yeah, in I was going to say, they're just yeah. switching the basketballs to size sevens. I knew that. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Andre's here we go. First. So Andre Arasol up first, rocking the number 78 jersey with Gigi on the back in reference to his nan which is a nice a nice sentiment to have. And that's typical of uh, what Chris has been like when it comes to organizing this event. 
making sure oh, that yeah. all the players get what they wanted, including multiple squad numbers for this event. As a Arasol still hasn't made his first, now makes this makes that one. And we oh, talk yeah. about we talk about Arasol, we talk about Zaire rocking a, a, a hoodie and and jogging bottoms. Andre Arasol wearing jeans for this. He's currently on five. Make that six. Yeah, Andre, Andre seems to take a different approach to the girls. So far, he's been a bit sore and taking his time a little bit. I think maybe because the, the four players have had their attempts, so he's just psyched out what they're doing and just yeah, going definitely. in his way. But uh, he likes that shot at the top of the key. Yeah, this is he why. he definitely does like that. And there it is, four oh. in a row for Arasol, <laughs> dancing his way to the next spot. He's on 12. Arasol now really feeling it. Gets that one, so he's on 15. He's four here. So oh, that's Andre that, that's makes that, that one that's just. That's friendly. <laughs> home, home time rule. The, the SSC roll. He moves on to 17. Two away from Denisa Molnar's total. By the way, Denisa Molnar got 21 in that, not 19. They've actually recounted it. So Denisa Molnar with 21. Andre Arasol finishes on 17. So Denisa Molnar, we thought it was 19, but it's just been changed as Arasol was shooting to 21. So an even tougher act for Jack Burnell, Zaya Taylor, and Tom Ward to 100%. follow. 100%, that's even more pressure on those guys. It looks like it's Jack Burnell up next. Jack Burnell coming up. 21, yeah, 21 out of 25 for Denisa Mollis. Jack Burnell, a good three-point shooter for Hemel, of course. Didn't see a lot of court time this season, but when he was on the court, played very well off the bench, especially in the playoff final a couple of weeks ago in Manchester. Strong role player. Yeah, this is his bread and butter, though, isn't it? Absolutely. A guy who's, I've seen, hit about eight threes on the bounce in an NBL Division One game at one time. During the COVID season, hit six for six against, oh, the, uh, against the Reading Rockets in a league game. Jack Burnell stringing another one. And another one. And goes a bit cold on that attempt. Oh. Still a lot of time, though, for him. Just under a minute. Legs, legs. <laughs> Kyle, you're looking at all aspects here, even to how their feet are set right now as he gets another one to go. Jack Burnell making another one. So he moves on to 15, or 14, excuse me. Final rack for Jack. Likes that corner three at the moment. He's on 17, so he's overtaken Andre Arasol. And Jack Burnell ends with 18 points. So Jack Burnell now moves into the runners-up spot. Yep. As he moves on to 18 points. Man, 21's a tough score. 21. Denisa Molnar, yeah, with 21 out of 25. And here we go. Zaire Taylor coming to the floor now, of course. A huge send-off for him. <laughs> Straight away, it's just like I'm just taking, one warm up <laughs> just there, taking yeah. a warm up <laughs> in Zaire fashion, <laughs> such a Zaire thing to do again. Gotta wait till the buzzer, buddy. <laughs> so Zaire Taylor, who will take pl take part in the men's All Star game later, now starts his three point adventure off. Of course, a guy. In his final season, a 34% three-point shooter for the season with the Thunder. Of course, had a huge send-off in Worthing against the Loughborough Riders back in March, a game that was shown on NBL Live with me and Vince. Hits another one, so he moves on to four now, Zaire Taylor, make that five. Six. Six. Now you go, six. Now this is Zaire's favorite spot. Maybe a little too close for comfort though. He likes, see, he likes the NBA range. Halfway. Yeah, likes the NBA range. Just shows how good the three point rims are down in Worthing, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> 11 now for Taylor.
You can sense Zaya now feeling it. He's on 13. Back iron for that one. Fuck it. You knew instantly as soon as that was going, yeah, and that one as see. well. So Taylor now moves on to 16, and he has a chance. Needs a good rack here. Still a lot of time. Taylor on 18. Level with Bernal. He, he needs this one. Needs Flash this up. one. Oh, oh, and he misses it. So Zaya Taylor and Jack Bernal tied at 18. Do, so we, Taylor, do we know what happens if it's a tie? I th I'm not sure. It has to be sudden death, surely. You shoot a half court shot. I think Zaya would <laughs> yeah. win that. NBA three. Yeah. Unfortunately, Chris uh, didn't give us the uh, rule book on that. Hopefully, that will be sudden death. Or maybe both players will reach the final alongside yeah. Denise and Molnar, maybe, as well. But, however, there is one more player to come, and a guy who led the league in three-point percentage for the majority of the season, Tom Ward, a 44% three-point shooter for the season, now stepping up. He's another guy you got to worry about as soon as he steps over halfway made his first eight attempts against the Essex Rebels on the opening day of the NBL season in an incredible shooting performance by him. But so far struggling. And there we go, makes his first. There we go. Of course, you and Tom have had battles over the years as well, haven't you? Yeah, Tom's almost my matchup every time we play Worthing. I'm sick of seeing him as well. <laughs> Tom yet to really get into a rhythm at the moment. Just four points on the board. Makes that one, though. Of course, Tom Ward likes the uh, the pull-up three-point shoot shot. Can catch and shoot as well. Currently on seven points. 34 seconds left on the clock for Tom Ward. There Hits we go. that one. Start to get going now. So currently Tom Ward on 10 gets that one to drop. Time though not on his side. Say, Tom might be the only one that might run Absolutely. out of time. Absolutely. Most players have finished by now but Tom less I than think, 10 I seconds. Just, I think he just realized now. Yeah, he's yeah. just realized so he's got to really put them up. 3 on the clock. Get up, get up one more. One more to go. That's got to count. I don't Karen care it, what they Karen say. It, Karen it. <laughs> That's got to count. <laughs> Either way, Tom Ward ends on 15 points. So after the first round of action, Denisa Molnar of Cardiff with 21 points is in the lead. Jack Bunnell, Zaire Taylor are tied in second place on 18 points. Andre Arasol in third on 17. And... Eleanor Bishop and Tom Ward each have 13, and Christina Karpova and Izzy Bunyan with 13 each in their round. Yeah, this is a close competition. It's just like the skills challenge earlier. As uh, yeah, that's when that's that when was, I arrived. When, yeah, when the final was going on, that Oof. was that was crazy competitive. So it looks like Jack Manel and Zaya Taylor will compete in the final alongside Denisa Molnar. Okay. Which is how it should be, yeah. really, shouldn't it? 100%. So... You can see the players on the uh, the WNBL side of the bench, you could say. Just having a laugh and a smile there. Of course, a heavy Solent and Cardiff duo or, or combination on that bench. With Amber Dean just checking out her phone. Hopefully checking out our YouTube channel. And uh, if you have joined us on the Rebound Basketball channel... Welcome, everyone. Great to have you all on board and keep those comments coming. It's a great way to end the NBL season, albeit unofficially, but we are ending it with this spectacular event, an all-star cast here at the Solent Sports Complex. John Hobbs, Carl Jimenez bringing you the action for this three-point contest. As Jack Bunnell prepares to go in the final round. One minute 30 remains on the clock. Jack Bunnell, Zaire Taylor. Yeah, he looks like he just wants to get started He now. just wants it, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah, he just wants to shoot the ball. Here we go. This one. Both of them have been short so far. Makes that one. There we go. Third time lucky for Jack Bunnell. Yep. Makes another. One more. 
And Next spot. goes cold on his final attempt. Here he goes again. Strings that one. Jack Manel with such a smooth release. Very effortless. Oh, yeah. He's got a real, real smooth shot, isn't Absolutely. It? Good rotation on the ball there. Gets and nearly got that one to go in and out with that attempt. Jack Bunnell gets that one. Here we go. Let's start heating up now. Now Bunnell from one of oh. his favorite spots. He hits so many threes in his career and including the one that really put Solon to under pressure in the playoff final. And he hits 100%. that one. He's hot now. I don't think he's got one favorite. I think they're all his favorite spot, to be honest. <laughs> he's going to be the one telling me that as well, yeah. I guess. <laughs> he's on 16, 17. Okay. Lot of time on okay. the clock for Bernal. Oh. And he ends again, like he did in the first round, on 18. Is that nine for 10 in the last two spots? Yeah, I think so. He missed. I think he missed got all but one, one on the uh, second to last. And I think it was the same on that one. So a good start to the final for Jack Bunnell. So Zaire Taylor now stepping up. Hopefully he now knows the rules to this. Yeah, well, we'll get a practice <laughs> shot up again. <laughs> when uh, Ronald Blaine picked him, I'm pretty sure Zaire had some influence in the choice of color that he was going to wear yeah. for this event. <laughs> Ronald Blaine probably had no choice but to accept Team Pink. Oh, yeah. But he what he wanted that anyway. He's told me as well as Taylor hits that one. Taylor in and out with that attempt. So far on two points, make that three. Too strong on his final attempt. So under a minute left for Taylor. There we go. One more. Gets yep. that one to go. He's a strong finish here. Really does need a strong finish, but the players on... In fact, all the players have found this area to be a particularly yeah. strong point for them. And Taylor, carrying five. on the tradition, hits four another four. one. Five Taylor for, again five gets for it. Five for five. Five for five. A perfect... Perfect there there for Taylor. Gets another one. Ne nearly got that one to drop. Going cold now, Zaya Taylor, but heats up again. And again, one needs more, this one, one to go. Gets big it. Big shot, big and shot. And like big Jack Bunnell, Zaya Taylor, I think Zaya Taylor might have actually overtaken on that final attempt. Yes, he has. So Zaya Taylor now has 19. So Denisa Molnar, who got more points than anyone. She set the standard for this She was the one, absolutely, who set the standard in this three-point contest now has a chance. She needs to go over 19, but she did that in the first round as the uh, volunteers quickly changed the balls from a size seven to a size six. Denisa will no doubt be fancying her chances right now. Yeah, I, th I think she'd just happily go with a size seven as well and take <laughs> on the guys for that. <laughs> the way she's shooting the ball, I don't think she really minds. Remember, she got 21 in the first round. She has 19 to beat. Jack Bennell with 18. Zaire Taylor, 19 in this final round. So, Zaire Taylor right now in pole position. What a way it would uh, to end his uh, career with a win in a three-point contest, I guess. Yeah, well, I hope he's not going to get the win in the All-Star <laughs> game because he's on another team. <laughs> So here we go. Denisa makes her first. Gets that one a drop. There we go. Another one. Yep. So a good start for Denisa Molnar. That's three or four, excuse me. I think it's two points for the last ball. I think you do, yeah. Molnar in and out with her out. final attempt. Remember, the winner of this uh, three-point contest gets a gift bag from Kent Baller, who are the sponsors for this three-point contest. And Denisa Molnar now in rhythm. Heating up. Now. Really oh, in okay. rhythm. Tough. Molnar now really feeling it. 
Oh, yeah, and she, another. she's hot now. Oh, my goodness, Denise Amolna. Oh, Zay is out of Zay her Zay mind. Oh. oh, big ass rat here. Oh, Denise Amolna out of her mind right now. Gets yep. another one. Another one. She's going for Zaire here. She's going for it. On 16, 20 seconds on the clock, though. 17. Needs this one. Blast it. Oh, and it goes in and out. So Zaire Taylor wins the Kent Baller three-point contest. So congratulations to Worthing Thunder's Zaire Taylor, who wins a gift certificate and a gift bag, excuse me, from Kent Baller. Yeah, it's, it's As I'm trying to drag Kyle from going away from us and going downstairs. <laughs> It's definitely fitting for Zaire to win this in his last year. However, as you said, Team Pink today for Zaire, you on Team So obviously, he, no he, love loss here. He, he's won the three-point contest. The game is my game. It's, <laughs> it's not for him. <laughs> he might need to come back next year and <laughs> compete in the three-point contest again. Of course. To defend his title, yeah. Absolutely. Well, Zaire Taylor, a lot of promising things happening for Worthing Thunder in the off-season. So uh, be sure to check the Worthing Thunder social media pages for all that happens for the Worthing Thunder because there's a lot of good things I've been told by, not by just Zaire, but also by co-director Sarah Jenner on what is happening. So a lot of good things going on for that event. And Molly Danielson courtside right now looking to grab Zaire for a quick word. joined by Zaire Taylor in just a second. I think we're just having some microphone issues here at the moment. It's Max Richardson and Tom Ward, of course, long-time teammates, just saying hello. So we are now going to be joined by Molly Danielson, who is with Zaire Taylor. Just a second, Zaire Taylor, of course, winning the uh, three-point challenge, as you could see on the replay. This is the uh, highlights of the uh, three-point contest. A good, entertaining contest, though, that yeah. we just witnessed. 100%. I think this is out of all competitions. Outside the games, this is what I was most excited to watch. And I feel like it was a fitting competition. Like, it was really competitive, set standard straight away. And I think, like I said before, it was a good fitting for Zaire to win it. And now it seems like we now have Molly and Zaya. I think we've sorted out what we've sorted out. And now Molly is with Zaya. Take it away, guys. Hi, right here, I'm Molly again here with Zare Taylor from Worthing Thunder, who just came off a win for the three-point competition. First off, Zare, how are you feeling about it? Nah, it was good. It was, it was fun. It was fun more than anything. Um, we were all talking our trash, talking about who's going to yeah. win. So that fires you up a little bit, makes it that much more. Yeah. Um, exciting and competitive. Exactly. How did you feel as a three-point shooter in the league this year? Did you feel like you really showed out? You said you're um, retiring too, so. Uh, yeah, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting up there. So it's a lot easier when I get to stand still and shoot shots. I still yeah. got the shot, but when you get me running up and down the court, it kind of brings down your percentage. Every shot you shoot is tired. Yeah. So it's like I, I'm glad I got to show people I still got it a little bit. Absolutely. So why are you retiring this year? Why was this the last year for you? Um. Obviously, owning the club and being a director and um, just the business and everything that has to be done to grow right. the club out to be successful all across the board, uh -huh. it's, it's a lot. And I feel like at times it takes me away from the game, the practices and everything else needed. So I need it's time to just pass the torch to the young guys, let okay. them do it, and do everything off the court that needs to be done. Well, what are you most excited about for the game coming up here? What are you excited to see and when it goes on? Um, 
Well, everybody else should be excited. I'm gonna dunk on somebody today. Okay. I'm retiring I'm waiting for when that. I dunk. I'm gonna <laughs> dunk on somebody today. So I'm gonna say that. But what I'm excited for is just to be on the court with everybody. It's like getting to hang out with Arisaw, with Hakeem Silla, with all these guys from yeah. all these teams that you respect. Absolutely. At, at the end of the day, it's competitive. Sometimes we're talking trash, but to yeah. get to be with them on the same team, <laughs> interacting, it's, 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 it's good energy, and I'm glad we're doing this. Yeah. Luckily, I won't be telling the players that are going to dunk on them, so it'll be more <laughs> of a surprise. But we're really excited to have you here. Great job on the three-point competition. We're really excited to see you for the Yo, All-Star game. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Cheers. All right. Thank you, Molly. And... It certainly all builds up to a fantastic day of basketball. The women's all-star game will come up next, of course, followed by the dunk contest, and then the men's all-star game will finish off here at Solent Sports Complex. John Hobbs, Jerry Merrill has now joined me um, in the commentary booth. And Jerry, I saw you, you were up and down. You were going mad at that three-point contest. I think you, re you really wanted a, a Solent win, not to be Zaire Taylor from the Worthing Thunder <laughs> getting the job done. <laughs> I, I think the person I wanted to win actually was Denise Amona. I mean, she, <laughs> when she came down here in the league, um, I was doing courtside comms and she absolutely killed us. Um, so it wasn't really a surprise when she came out and got that amazing... 21. 21. Yeah. We thought yeah. it was 19. They yeah, changed yeah, yeah, it very quickly. Yeah. I think I suddenly realised it was two, two points, was it, for the last yeah. ball of the... Yeah, last ball of the rack. But, um, but yeah, so a great, great shootout, great competition. You know, Zaya is always going to step up, no matter what the competition is. It could be, could be billiards, could be dominoes. <laughs> the guy's going to want to win, you know. It's um, you know, fan fantastic. And, you know, with him retiring as well, you know, fitting send-off crowd getting behind him and everything. Mm. And already, he, he's already started the ball rolling. He's going to dunk <laughs> on somebody tonight. Now, he had an opportunity in his final home game against Loughborough to throw it down. He was in transition. It was just him on his own. He decided to lay it in <laughs> for whatever reason, but he did that. But tonight, he, he has said he is going to dunk on someone. I, I think everybody's going to be looking to dunk on someone. I mean, you know, Kyle, you know, whoever it's going to be, they're going to look to throw it down. Um, you know, I, I could even see Andre if he gets out on the on the break. You know, um, he missed that he missed that dunk in the trophy yep. final last year, and yep. then ever since then he's just laid it in. So I think he's you know he's looking for a bit of um, bit of showtime as well. And as is everybody, you know, absolutely. It's been, it's been a brilliant afternoon so far, and. Um, no We're really getting it. down to business in about half an hour's time with the women's no game. No doubt about it. As you saw on the screen, players from all across the league here today, from Hemel Storm, Nottingham Hood, Solent Kestrels. Of course, there's a few players from Team Newcastle also in attendance. Great to have them on board. They've travelled all the way up from, all the way down, excuse me, from the northeast, a near 370-mile trip for them. But they are also here just a culmination of everything that's good about National Basketball League, both the men and the women. And this is what we want to see, isn't it? That all-star event, that fun event, where you know, players can just almost, not in a way of relax, because obviously they all want to win, but just hang out. As you can see here, there you go, Jack Bunnell, Travis Charles, hanging out there. Just chill out, play, and just have fun. Yeah, exactly, and an opportunity as well for, as more and more people come in to watch the games. You know, an opportunity, you know, there's no segregation between the players and the fans. You know, everybody's interacting. It's just a really, really great vibe. So we are going to wrap up the first half of action here at the Rebound All-Star event here at the Solent Sports Complex. Join us in around 15 minutes' time as we bring you the women's all-star game here at the Solent Sports Complex. But my thanks to Elia al Shabri, to Carl Jimenez and to Jerry Merrill. I'm John Hobbs and we will see you in around 15 minutes' time. Till then.
Central. We are here in Southampton. And it is the women's all-star game between Team Hulm and Team Al Shabri. John Hobbs alongside Molly Danielson, who's been one of the key organizers in this event. Molly, welcome. And the crowds are now starting to fill in. It was about quarter full for the skills challenge and the three point event. Now it's coming down to the women's all-star game and it's now nearly just over half full. This is a great occasion. And Margaret, you've got to be thrilled. I can see the smile on your face right now. You've got to be happy with how this is all going. And now it's the Women's All-Star Game. Your thoughts? Yeah. It's a long event. I know sometimes yeah. when you watch the NBA and WNBA All-Star Game, it's a weekend long. So we tried to fit everything we could into one day. So we had to start with doors open at one. So of course, you know, the crowd's going to trickle in at the beginning of the day with the skill session and three point. But I think it's really exciting now we get to highlight all of the players when they're in the game. So now we get to watch about 20 players for the women's side. And it's just from everyone in the conference. I mean, some of the star players and actually some players aren't here, but you're going to have Alia Strawberry, who actually is injured right now. She right. got injured in actually the quarterfinal game against us yeah. the Team Kestrels, and but she's just such a good attitude. She stepped up to coach today, so we're actually really excited about that. So you see the two teams right there. Now for Team Al Shabri, just a minor change. No Yasin Belenbayi for Ipswich. She is not playing in this game. So you see Team Hulm, as you can see, right there it's as it is and loads of great matchups here in this um, in this game of course the game the, the matchup i'm looking forward to is not necessarily a matchup it's more of a bragging rights one okay. between the two mvps the regular season mvp okay. in amber dean and the playoff final uh, um, mvp in fumia modi yeah, I like that. You know, both those players were studs throughout the whole year right now, and they're both contributing both sides. You know, Funme Mode, I'm firsthand watched it. She was a oh. beast in that finals game. I mean, she was rebounding, and she's been on the scout, right? We were doing the scout. But she just does everything when everyone else is just trickling down a little bit. Mm. Obviously, you had Ozzy Moto, who had, what, she had 25 rebounds, yeah, which is absolutely. impactful. But I know that we were double teaming, so for Funme Mode to get in there and do her business, she definitely did. And then Amber Dean, I mean, I get speechless when I talk about a quadruple <laughs> double. That's just ridiculous. So for the teams here, Team El Shabri in Brew and Team Hulm in, in pink, of course, head coach Jacob Lloyd for Team Hulm. And another change on El Shabri is no CJ Lee mm -hmm. for, uh, for Team El Shabri. So Alia has stepped in yes. to be head coach. <laughs> and the way it was done was absolutely marvelous. Literally, you called her up. Mm -hmm. You said, right, I want you to be head coach. Without, you didn't even need to finish a sentence. No, absolutely. Well, actually, I called her. I was like, hey, Alia, I know you're about to drive out here. It was about 9 a.m., maybe 8 a.m. I was like, hey, we actually just had a situation. A coach had to drop. And right as I said, she goes, yep, give me, give me that. I'll go grab my pens <laughs> right now. It. I got my board. I, do I, have, I have a board right now. So she just grabbed it. She goes, oh, Robin's picking me up. I got it just in time. So, I'm, I mean, she's the perfect person to have so much energy and enthusiasm. This event is just totally her realm. Absolutely. So disappointing she couldn't make it you know we spoke to her earlier on um obviously unfortunately injured and out yes. for the summer so she is recuperating she came back from egypt late last night yeah it came straight <laughs> here absolutely pumped for it it's, Committed. she was telling me it was all she's been talking about since the season ended well, we actually, because I had a knee injury also this year, and so did she. So when she first got mm. injured, you know, shed a tear a little bit because I just know how it feels. But I've been talking through her, to her throughout the whole process, and she's been so positive. And she even texted me, she goes, Molly, I can walk again without crutches. <laughs> I was like, I understand. It's the best feeling ever. So, again, the energy is just there. Absolutely. So starting fives we are seeing on the floor. For Team Blue, it'll be Robin Ainge, Fumia Modi, Katie Janisowska, Taylor Gaffney, and Ezekiel Lisk. And for Team Hulm in pink, of course, Katrin Hulm is uh, there. Christina Velke Cleave, Izzy Ozzy Momadou, Emily O'Connell, and Amber Dean. We are nearly getting ready to get underway in the first WNBL All Star game in recent memory. Of course, the last NBL All Star game back in 2003. And that was just down the road in Eastleigh at Fleming Park. Mm -hmm. Of course, Myself and Jerry have uh, better memories of, of that than you would probably do, Molly. But uh, well. either way, that's another conversation. 
You know, actually, the reason why we're slowing down a little bit on this game, though, I think is interesting, is everyone got to choose the number that they wanted, whether it was their jersey or not. So right now, the table is trying to figure out how they're going to give scores and fouls out with the same number. And this was an interesting conversation that I had with Chris, actually, as well. He was like, I'm free and easy. The players can choose the numbers yeah. they want. Little did he know that it would cause quite <laughs> havoc. I think, if I'm not mistaken, there are three players on Team Al Shabri that are wearing number six. Yes. <laughs> But so, honestly, you do it for the players, though. The you players do, absolutely. are going to hang it up, so it's totally worth the confusion a for the table. A million percent. A million percent. So that's the issue we're having right now. And there would have been two players in number five jerseys, but uh, Yasin Belimbay is not playing. And actually, Al Shabri was going to be wearing number five, so there would have been three players wearing number five. Jerry, you're begging to get on this, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, I, I was put, I was putting all the jerseys and all the kit out at the start of the day, and I was coming out, number six ending, number six somebody else, number six somebody else. I thought, this must be wrong. They've labelled them all up wrong. Who's is who's? Katie, <laughs> Katie Janosowska, Faye ending, Robin Ainge, all wearing number six for Team Al Shabri in this one. This is going to be a fun one for the referees and the table officials to call. They're still debating it. Hey, John, can you talk about the All-Star game that's coming up here for the under-19s happening? There's a lot of All-Stars here that are going to be playing at the end of the month. Yeah, absolutely. So at the end of the month, Hoops Fix All-Star game happening at Crystal Palace. And teams were revealed for that. And we'll talk about that a bit more at the half because Sam Nita of Hoops Fix is in attendance covering this game today as we get underway at the rebound All-Star event. Here is O'Connell on the ball to Katrin Hulme, who, of course, led Angela Ruskin in near enough every statistic this season. Our immediate double team down there. Absolutely, no <laughs> love lost there as O'Connell gets the first points of the Rebound All-Stars event. So a big milestone already for Chris Hughes and Rebound, and it goes to Kohler's Emily O'Connell. Lisk driving, going at Izzy Ozzy Momadou. And Ozzy Momadou with the Rebound. Rebound watch for Izzy Ozzy Momadou today. Of course, 25 rebounds Ridiculous. in that playoff final against Solent. And what a game that was, of course. Heartbreak for Solent and, and of course, yourself, Molly, yeah. on that day. But It was um, definitely tough. But, I mean, Cole is such a great competitor, and they have mm. great attitudes after the game that it was totally worth the competition that day. Absolutely. Such a fantastic advert for WNBL basketball in Manchester that day. An open Amber Dean in the corner off the back iron, and Katie Janosowska gets the rebound. Here is Gaffney. It's been really nice having Gaffney. You know, when I went out, she actually was practicing with us the entire mm. year, so she's already been committed from the get-go. And to have her on this All-Stars, I was just so excited. My favorite thing was telling her in person. I was like, hey, I got some good news for you. <laughs> so that was one of the best things I could do, just talking to Gaffney. It's great to hear. It's Janosowska blocks Izzy Ozzy Momadou at the rim. Oh my goodness. And it's a scramble at mid-court here. The ref's just watching the world. Absolutely. <laughs> Why not? Just let them go at it. It's a fun event. Here is Amber Dean on the ball. Velky Cleave in the corner. That's a two. And Ezekiel Lisk of Thames Valley gets the rebound. That's a good matchup down there for both Ozimodu and Absolutely. Lisk. They're just both so strong. When I played against them the first half of the year, oh my gosh, I had bruises the next day. <laughs> Lisk, who led Thames Valley in rebounds this season, just under 10. Velky as Cleave. Velky Cleave, the hometown girl, gets a rebound. And what a season she's had, especially coming back from maternity leave in December, has made an instant impact with the Kestrels, leading them to two finals. Yeah, sometimes I don't think people realize, not that I know exactly, but how hard it is to come back from a baby. It's pretty much a surgery, and for her to just come in immediately and have triple doubles is ridiculous. Here is O'Connell driving. O'Connell goes Ooh, class and a yeah, foul. And one. Going straight at Robin Ainge. And Emily O'Connell with four quick points. And Team Hulme has six. Al Shabri yet to get off the mark. And you can see Al Shabri is <laughs> pacing up and down Look the at bench. Her face. <laughs> She's like, what's going on out here? This coaching thing is hard. <laughs> All right, we got As Bunyan there who did awesome in the three-point competition Oh, also. absolutely. Izzy Bunyan, wow, what an impact she made. Narrowly missing out to Zahir Taylor in the final of the three-point contest. She comes in for Lisk. 
made her WBBL debut at just 15 years of age. Izzy Bunyan, what a future she has. Taylor Gaffney hey, strings yo. a three. Yeah, Gaffney. See, she just needed one to drop. The rest are falling. You watch out. She averaged around 25 points in the playoffs this season. Hulme to Fatmana Jenna, who passes oh. it straight to Christina Velke cleave on Team Pink's bench. It's a uh, good pass. A lot of contact, though, <laughs> I would say, down the baseline, too. <laughs> Fat Man Jana, what a season she had with London Lions too this season. The offensive juggernaut yes. for that London Lions team. Second only to Worcester's Chandri Nunez in scoring. Jana Sauska, a bit of room, mid-range jumper, and Jana with the rebound. Kjorm. Nice ball fake there on oh, Bunyan. Pass. Beautiful pass to Izzy Ozzy Momadou. Where'd she come from on that one? She gave a nice little shuffle pass down low. Usually that's a hard pass right underneath the hoop too. Absolutely. Here is Amodi going against her cola teammate Izzy Ozzy Momadou. <laughs> Izzy Ozzy Momadou with a smile on her face as she was backing that up. Is, uh... That's probably what practice looks like every day. <laughs> <laughs> Hume. Ooh. Step back jumper. Oh, that would have been dirty. <laughs> Those was... two, when they were in the playoffs in the TVC, yeah. they were both Gaffney and Goldsby were just going at it against each other, just played so hard. When they gave each other a hug at the end, you just knew that they played their hardest possible in that game. Here is Hulme, who isn't traditionally a, uh, a point guard. She was saying to me before the game that throughout the season, she did try and play the role of point guard, even though she wasn't very comfortable with it, but did grow into that position with Angela Ruskin. And of course, uh, Team Pink head coach Jacob Lloyd of Angela Ruskin as well. So much respect between Hulme and Lloyd. Hulme is almost like the, the assistant coach of ARU this season, oh, yeah. as well as a player. No player has had more appearances on the Focus Hoops Player of the Week than Katrin Hulme. Ten appearances, six of them as Player of the Week. I mean, no surprise there, though. I mean, she's a beast, and she knows exactly what she has to do. And that last game where she played against Cola, you know, honestly, ARU just did not have their best game, but you just saw that Hume was doing everything in her power to try to keep them in that game. Playing a little bit point guard, going down low, rebound. She hit a three, like, right before the first half ended. She did the best she could in that game, for sure. Inside goes uh, Chinwe Amuzi, who... Another player, a big part of the Thames Valley Cavaliers this season that went from finishing eighth in the COVID season, you could say, in 2020, 2021, to a very respectable third place. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> already a timeout called. Al Shabri is really not happy, screaming for her players to come to the bench. Yeah, she, was she would make hands. a great coach, wouldn't she? Oh, yeah. You, do, you know she's small. You know that they're freaking going to listen to her when she's in the huddle. You better listen and pull up. <laughs> look, she's even directing. You can see her hands telling her, you got to move this way. You got to move this way. She's telling her. But look, at, they're all looking super engaged when she's talking. <laughs> and that's, do you know what? That shows so much respect yes. that they have for Al Shabli, isn't it? A, a player that would have you know, loved to have been on the court right now. And you can see all of her enthusiasm. Yeah. As you see Jacob Lloyd on the other end giving some instructions to his team who are up 10-3 right now. You know, Jacob Lloyd is relatively young in his coaching yeah. career. I believe he's 28 or 29, but his success, he's going to a program. He knows that he wants to build them and bring them together because he's also coaching the Bucks team. So mm. I feel like that's a really good spot to start in the WNBL. Absolutely. And uh, alongside Matthew Harbour, who is the director of coaching at Angler Ruskin, as well, of course, Matthew Harbour steered Angela Ruskin to playoff glory some years ago in uh, 2016. As it's just a, an issue, I think, with the shot clock at the moment. It's just been turned off. But uh, either way, we'll shoot the free throws. And Awuzi makes the first. And Team Hulme is up 10 to 3. Of course, still a lot more action to come in the rebound All-Stars event as oh, uh, a steal there from from Jana. She's so long. Bla oh! Blocked <laughs> by Izzy Bunyan. <laughs> that block was ridiculous. <laughs> that was a slam to the ground, full contact. And she, Bunyan is so chill. She's so steadfast. She just goes, all right. She just walked away like it Absolutely. Was no <laughs> as the ball does go out of bounds, referee Tim Brown in good position. So Endine touched it last. I'm still not over that block. <laughs> <laughs> Huge block as uh, Goldsby has it. 
into the game for the first time. Courtney Gray for Angela. Oh. Ruskin inside it goes, and oh, Jana misses man. the layup. Perfect pass, though. Hernida Nunez for Reading on the ball. Courtney Gray gets oh, a two to go. Nice shot there. She also had a really good playoff run in the beginning. She helped. She definitely helped ARU win there against Ipswich. Mm. That game was so intense. It's so hard to play at Ipswich, and she just showed up and actually turned out player of the week. And there's Taylor Gaffney with the three points to the crowd, especially the Solent Kestrels players that are watching here today. Ooh, long three. Big oh. three, and oh, it goes. <laughs> she's looking Jana at Jana from downtown. <laughs> She knows what she's doing. She's in it. She's and so Gaffney focused. Almost thought Gaffney was going to go right back. Instead, Endine will drive, pull up at the foul line and hit. Yeah, Endine. She loves that little pull up one dribble. I mean, it should be on every person's scout. <laughs> and Faye Endine with her first points. And Taylor Gaffney gets a break from the scorer's table. She had all six of El Shabri's points until that point. Jana going in. So, excuse me, a woozy going inside. Great power. See, the basic drop step is still in the game. And there oh! it is again, Faye Endine with back-to-back -back pull up jumpers from the foul line. Oh, we love to see it. <laughs> Four points for Endine. We will be one of the players in the Hoops Fix All-Star game in a couple of weeks. Going inside, oh! Jana puts on the brakes but misses the two. And a pass from Gaffney finds Courtney Gray who finds Taylor Gaffney again. <laughs> And this is how Solent oh. like it, the connection, but go, oh, and he misses the layup. I love it, teammate to teammate though. All the sixes getting involved, Ainge misses the layup. <laughs> Bunyan, an open three, and that's off to the right. A lot of action there, <laughs> a lot of action in one possession. Solent Kestrels love the transition game, it nearly came to play there, but uh, here come Team Pink Great with Goldsbury. Cut. Goldsbury, who misses the fadeaway jumper. But a really nice slash there into the paint. Ainge, oh, it's stripped by a woozy. Bunyan, a three in the corner, back iron it goes. Goldsby rebounds. It's definitely an all-star game. It's going quick, a lot of shot attempts. <laughs> 16 to 10 in favor of Team Hulm. Of course, bragging rights went to Team Blue first off as Alia Al Shabri alluded to in commentary in the skills contest as Gaffney got the job done there. But Goldsbury blows roll right past her. Awuzi gets the rebound and she is going to go to the foul line. Chinwe Awuzi, what a, again, as said, a great season for her, averaging 9.7 rebounds a game for a Thames Valley team that was so vastly improved from last season. Yeah, you know, she looks undersized in the paint, but really she is one of the strongest offensive mm. rebounders I've gone against. And sometimes with our team, we got to box out. You got to push her back to actually give her no chance to get the rebound because she's going to put it back up or get herself to the line. So Woozy misses the foul shot first. Of course, following on from this women's all-star game and so far a fast start. 2.57 remaining at 16 to 10. We have the dunk contest, which should start at around 5.15 and then the men's all-star game wrapping up an amazing day here at Solent Sports Complex at 6 p.m. Honina Nunez of Reading Rockets bringing the ball up. Here is O'Connell to Dean. Dean putting the moves on her Cardiff teammate, Izzy Bunyan. Good kick out. Open Honina Nunez misses the three. Looking for that point guard. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Gaffney <laughs> finds Lisk. Lisk is short with her jumper, and Dean nearly, get it, nearly got it stolen from Izzy Bunyan. Yeah, something to remember, too, about this All-Star game is there's no practices for either team no. coming in here. So they're trying their best to work with each other, and they're doing really well. But I think sometimes if they had maybe one or two more practices, you'd see a lot more connection going on the court. Now in, into the game for the first time, Christina Karpova of Solon. We didn't mention this at the start, but Christina Karpova, the replacement for Yasem Belimbay in this All-Star game. Yasem Belimbay not uh, featuring in today's action for Ipswich. Yeah, she's actually working on her dissertation right now. So mm. she told me uh, last night, she was like, I just, I have to finish it, Mom. I got to graduate. I was like, I think you'll be fine if you become the All-Star game. I'm just sad. <laughs> I want you here. But no, she's put in school first, like a good school career athlete. Definitely putting education first. There's no doubt about that. And we just uh, have some clock issues at the moment so that we're just looking to sort out as 
Amber Dean. Amber Dean and um, Izzy Bunyan have really been going at it in this uh, first quarter mm -hmm. whenever they've been on court. So uh, no love lost between the Welsh Dragons. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> You know, Amber Dean, I just found out, she's actually working on her PhD mm. dissertation right now, too. So I think we'll see her again at Cardiff next year. Oh, yeah. Because I don't believe she's finishing it this year. I think she's got another one or two years, which is really good for this league. I'll I mean, have a player of her caliber. A thousand percent. Lots of uh, players. Definitely, as you say, with Yasin Belimbay putting education first. Robin Ainger getting an honors from Loughborough University in uh, both maths and sports science. So, oh, goodness. I know, it's, it's putting us to, <laughs> it's putting me to shame right now, I tell you, as the ball goes out of bounds. <laughs> and Team Blue will collect. Here is Ainge. Ainge driving, wow. going glass too strong. No one stops her. So 150 remaining in this first period. Oh, and oh, man. Good pass from Dean. Unfortunately, O'Connell couldn't hang on to it. The look away. <laughs> but that'll be there again. It looks like every player looks like they had their week off. They're a little bit more in shape. They're running the floor. <laughs> and here is Jana Salska, who pulls up, misses the two from the elbow. What a summer as the ball goes out of bounds. What a summer, Katie Jana Salska is uh, in for committed to St. Francis in mm -hmm. Brooklyn yes. in NCAA Division One. Congratulations to Katie. What a season she's had for Loughborough and a deserved place at such a prestigious basketball school as Taylor Gaffney short with her three and Izzy Ozzy Momadou with the rebound. Ooh. And stolen by Gaffney Taking some as O'Connell was going to advance the ball strong and Amodi misses the layup. Wow, so Gaffney gets it back. Oh, oh, wow. And Modi, I thought, yeah, I thought Amodi was fouled there by Christina <laughs> Karpova, and she was. Smiles all round. A lot of contact. <laughs> Just a little bit of contact there as, uh, yeah, as, the, <laughs> as the veteran Christina Karpova, Estonia's finest, collects yeah. her first foul. <laughs> Oh, the fun thing I'm watching right now with Gaffney, she's picking pockets. She's so good at it. Sometimes, like, you do get beat on it, but, I mean, the amount of times that she gets a tip out of it and gets to a steal, I mean, that just happened right now, so they got it for blue there. <laughs> for Mia Modi, the playoff final MVP. What a final she had in Manchester a couple of weeks ago, signing the season off here at the Rebound All-Stars event. Her future is so big. It's Absolutely. Ridiculous. There's no ceiling right now. I can't even tell you what the ceiling would be. I think be. for the majority of the, in fact, all of the Kohler players, the future is most certainly bright for them. Ooh. Amber Dean oh. putting the moves on Ainge and the ball Dean. goes out of bounds. Amber Dean putting on some flash in this first quarter. <laughs> she went for the no-look pass, and now she's going behind the head. The third one's got to connect. <laughs> Janiszewska. Number six to number six, Jana Sauska almost blocked by wow. Mamadou, but Jana Sauska keeps her composure. Final 40 seconds of this first half, and the gap is two. Team Hulme still have the advantage. O'Connell and Izzy Ozzy Mamadou couldn't quite collect it. Tough pass inside, a lot of hands in that passing lane. Ainge putting the moves on O'Connell. Jana Sauska on a catch and shoot ball goes out of bounds anyway, and uh, it will be Team Pink's ball. You know, I feel like she's been getting a lot quicker on her release, which is going to be really good for D1 NCAA when she's out in Brooklyn because sometimes those shooters are so quick, but defense comes up on you. So her shot's been looking quicker throughout this season. Courtney Gray. Amber Dean has it marked by Gaffney. And Courtney Gray couldn't pick up the ball, and here comes Gaffney. Shot clock turned off. Final seconds of this first quarter. And Modi going over. Oh. Mamadou, it's a block. No, it's a foul. <laughs> oh. She really brought that arm Izzy down Izzy. <laughs> <laughs> Thought for a second there. Izzy Ozzy Mamadou got the block, but a foul was called. So Fumi Modi will go to the foul line. Three seconds remaining in this first half. First foul on Izzy Ozzy Mamadou. And uh, Fumi Amodi makes the first. Taylor Gaffney leading all scorers at the moment with six points. Emily O'Connell of Cola leading the way for Team Hulme with five. Nice free throws. Team captain Katrin Hulme only with one point so far, but either way, there's a half-court heave there 
from O'Connell goes nowhere, and that ends the first quarter. It's all tied up at 16. A great first quarter of action. Loads of entertainment, loads of loads of action, great plays, great baskets. It's all we want to yeah. see in an all-star game, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there was a big run in the beginning there. I think it was 10 to 3, so I think Alia, you know, Team Blue, was a little nervous beginning, but I think she started to rotate them well. I mean, Honestly, Coach Lloyd has been rotating nonstop. He's like, I got some vet players here. They're going to do what they're going to do. So I'm just going to give them a break. That's what he said beforehand to catch and Hume. Absolutely. And what we're, you know, what you obviously can't see from this live stream, what we're seeing here live today is, you know, fans from all over the country have turned up. There's a huge Hemel following, a huge Worthing mm -hmm. following, Solon. There's a few from Newcastle and Nottingham that are here at the moment. Players and coaches from all over the leagues are here as well. It's just a fantastic atmosphere all round, isn't it? Oh, it's a great atmosphere. And honestly, the seats are, are just still filling up right now. It's early on the Saturday, but it's really nice to see the kids out here. We have a huge youth program here at Solent, and we do the little minis on Sundays. So I'm like, hey, if you want to see some really good role models to my gal players, I tell them to come out to this game so they can see some really fun action and get them more involved in basketball. And what's also fun is we've near us on the commentary booth, we've actually got like a mini crash going on, which is so much fun to see the kid even the little kids are enjoying the action here and that that's what it's really all about it's what you alluded to just now but it, that's what's really fun is the toddlers even the newborns are, have got their eyes wide and they're looking at what's going on and they seem to be enjoying themselves as well even the mum's having a dance as well as yeah. the uh, <laughs> the uh, the music was happening there so it's all good fun and this is what you know you like to see isn't it just a good fun atmosphere but competitive action on the court yeah, just speaking of that, both Gaffney and Goldsby are just smiling at each other as they're <laughs> playing, so that's even more fun to watch. <laughs> Ainge driving. She had an open lane there, but decided to kick it out to Janisowska, who had Velky Cleave all around her. Yeah, Ainge is so good at getting to the hoop, too. So she's just, you know, all-star just being selfless and passing the ball, but she could have gotten that up. Easily. There is Janisowska short with a three. Oh, nice save. pass there, and Ainge <laughs> has it. They'll reset. She'll put up a three and knock oh. it down. I know she dribbled, but give Lisk the assist because of that oh. save. <laughs> Goldsby to Hulme at the elbow. Hulme oh. gets Amodi up in the air, but Amodi gets the rebound. Here is Ainge. Nice fake, though. She got her flying up in the air. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ainge, another three, and that's off the back iron this time, and Christina Karpova gets the rebound. Of course, Karpova taking part in the uh, activities earlier on today as Goldsby puts up a three. That's off the backboard. Karpova, Ooh, will, she will have no hesitation for three and Jana Salska collects the loose ball. Hey, the kick out from the block out to that sweet spot is definitely Karpova's favorite spot. And she's been shooting deep. She was shooting so well in the finals game. She was three for eight, but she hit the really important threes. Big rebound there off the miss, but Christina Karpova at the other end gets the steal and passes it to her longtime teammate, Velky Cleave. Oh. Another catch and shoot for Christina Karpova. And once again, Jana Salska collects the rebound. Ooh, solid players guarding each other again. Here we go, Karpova against Gaffney. Gaffney off the back <laughs> iron with her long two. And Ooh, again, Karpova <laughs> and Gaffney. Gaffney with the pull-up jumper, and that's money. Oh, she's laughing. <laughs> Karpova's probably like, dang it, I got to get her back <laughs> on the other end. <laughs> Could already see Karpova's actually had her hand up there for a second, but Velky oh, yeah. Cleave deciding no. Here is Velky Cleave to Ozzy Momadou. Momadou with the two blocked by her <laughs> Kola teammate, Fumi Amodi, but Amodi couldn't hang on to the pass in transition. Velky Cleave. Pulls up for a short two, oh. and that's good. Velky Cleave can shoot anywhere on the court. One time, our coach, CJ Lee, just drew up, you know, where some people could shoot, and he just drew scribbles all across <laughs> the board and said, that's for Christy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. it looks like Coach Ollie has got her full, her full bench coming Absolutely. She in is next. going for it right now, isn't she? <laughs> She's obviously not happy with how something's going on. Goldsby all the way, and uh, Katie Janasowska with the foul. That'll be Janasowska's first foul. Team Al, Sh Al Shabri is not happy with something. I think she's even calling a... Yeah, she's calling a sub. <laughs> I thought she was going to call a timeout there. She was thinking about it. 
Oh, it's so hard to, she's so serious, but it's so hard to take her seriously sometimes. <laughs> so into the game for the first time, Lindsay Clary for Team Blue. Faye Endine checking in as well, as is Robin Ainge. And Izzy Bunyan will complete the, uh, the five for Team Blue and Lizzie Clary. A tough season for her with Nottingham Trent this season, mm -hmm. only getting two wins and finishing bottom, but starring with 16 points, 11 rebounds a game. So a great season for her. Unfortunately, got, you know, as a, as a team, Nottingham finishing bottom, but they'll no doubt return. She's got a wicked up and under move. Got me every time. Mm. Whew. Was scrappy at the three throw line. It's all star. It's an all star game, but no love lost there. Oh, they're smiling. I mean, both Karpova and Bishop are actually really good friends off the court. So I think that was really fun for them to get in that little, <laughs> that little jump ball. Possession arrow going the way of Team Pink. So here is Karpova back to Goldsbury, who will start the possession. Here is Goldsby now. Jana. Oh, a lot of power there. Jana, oh! nice pass inside. <laughs> and Katrin Hume says, thank you very much. Oh, great high five. That was a great connection. Again, it's such a small pass inside. The key is so hard. But that double team was coming in, so she knew exactly where the space was. Good off-ball movement as well by Hume. Here is Bunyan. Amodi. This time gets Hume in a spin cycle, and Fumi Amodi will go to the foul line. Almost a bit of payback there from Amodi, who got caught jumping for joy when Katrin Hume sold her the fake earlier. And now Amodi putting Hume in a bit of a spin cycle, as you can see Jacob Lloyd on the screen, as Christina Karpova will take a seat. You know, it's always funny that she went up for that fake because you had both Hume <laughs> and Ozzy Mode, who are just the tallest pair you could have, so I don't even know why they're trying to block. No one's going to shoot over that wall. <laughs> Fumi Amodi makes the free throw, which was celebrated in very enthusiastic style on the bench by El Shabri. No doubt she really wants to win this one. Yeah. Her coaching debut. Her coaching debut. Oh, okay. she's got a future ahead of her if she wins this one. Yeah, <laughs> put it on the resume. Absolutely. Time. Goldsby putting the moves on Endine. Nice oh, pass man. again. Izzy Ozzy Mamadou couldn't hang on to it. Jana. And a travel has been called. The referees, you could see the referees were really hesitant to actually blow yeah, the whistle there. Totally. Wanting to get you know, the play just free-flowing and moving. This is an all-star game, but a travel was called there. The referees spotting that. I mean, it was that or a three-second. One of them was yeah, coming Yeah, one up. of the two. Endine driving at Hjorm. And Faye Endine will go to the foul line for two. And a player who has grown so, so much mm -hmm. in her Absolutely. very young playing career. Came up from Division Two with the Solent Kestrel senior team a couple of seasons ago and is now one of the leading offensive players in WNBL Division One. What a talent Faye Endine is. I, I don't even think she understands her ceiling at all. I mean, she is so strong for her age and for her size. She's actually very powerful. When she mm. goes to the hoop, She's so strong and she can finish those and ones. I just I can't wait for her to just see each step getting higher and higher. Absolutely. And it's been so much fun to watch Faye Endy in action this season. As it's fun playing with Faye Endy in action. <laughs> I don't have that opportunity either way. <laughs> well, I was lucky too. I you were lucky too, I guess. <laughs> or maybe unlucky in training. Who knows? <laughs> hey, when I was on the same team with her in training, I was happy about it. <laughs> Shot clock winding down, so Jana has to put up a floater, but gets her own rebound. That is new 14. A woundsy. Jana again driving at Clary, goes glass and gets it to go. So quick. She's so athletic. She's also a young one. She's 18, 19, right? Mm. I mean, she's, I mean, she's gonna be a WBBL eventually. Don't know when, but it's coming up. Clary misses the three, and Izzy Ozzy Momadou another rebound for her as Katrin Hulme has it again. Brings the ball up, says, I've got this. Here is Goldsby. Driving again at ending. Yeah, good defense there. Take her away from the baseline to stop that pass. Here is ending again. Oh. Ending inside. She could have turned back to her backside on that left. 
Goldsby. Inside to Mamadou. Blocked, or excuse me, stolen by Clary. She made that look so easy. Absolutely. Endine has it. Endine wide open. Three point. And that's off the back iron. Big rebound from Amodi again. Oh. Clary with the floater, and that's good. Nice. You know, I was just talking to Clary. She actually worked at Microsoft before she came over here in England. She's from Seattle, so she's just a smart cookie. But she's from the Pacific Northwest, PNW, where I'm from. So, you know, got some close friends out there. <laughs> <laughs> Hulme on the spin, one of her favorite moves, and she's going to go to the foul line. So far, Katrin Hulme been the recipient of some heavy defense. I'm not sure if that's just Al Shabli just wanting to let her know yeah. that, you know, you're Absolutely. a team captain, I don't know. When they found out they were captains, let me tell you the banter that went on. There was one that Hume sent me. She sent a picture of fire with the jersey, the blue jersey from Ollie. And she goes, this is you coming up on May 7th. <laughs> so they're having really good fun. Like they I'm, are totally into it. I don't think it's uh, allowed to talk about what she was telling telling us back in Manchester a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> but a player that's so dedicated to her craft, Katrin Hulme. Here is Clary driving at Hulme. Oh, wow. And nice. gets the layup to go. Wow, I didn't see a lot of that because she had to be the post position when she was at Nottingham, but she had a really nice, she served up some there, little Steve Nash. <laughs> Jana. Jana for long two. That's off the back iron, and it's rebounded by Ainge. Nice wow. pass from Ainge. Oh, Beautiful oh basketball. My goodness. That was ridiculous. Fantastic basketball. What IQ. From Team Blue. And it was finished off by Izzy Bunyan. Wow, great finish. O'Connell strings along two. Ooh, nice little mid-range there. Nice arc, too. Oh, it's just beautiful basketball. It's so fun. Everyone has such high cues, right? Ending. We'll have to reset. Cross-court pass. Stolen by O'Connell. O'Connell now two on two. In fact, it's three on two. And a two-pointer is off on the follow was Hulme. And Hulme misses her layup attempt. Here is O'Connell. And it's stolen away by Clary. Three minutes and ten left in the half. Clary misses the layup. And O'Connell collects the loose ball. Man, everyone's looking so light on their feet, looking so athletic. A lot of these boards are steals. You can see that both both teams getting into their rhythm a little bit. It's just that yeah. final execution. Ainge is all alone, and she will miss the layup. Oh, no, she's smiling. Oh, no. <laughs> a smile on her face nonetheless, but misses the layup. El Shabli is out up by two. Wow, great power. As Hernina Nunes misses the layup. I think a Wednesday wanted a foul there. Yeah. She's limping a little bit as well. She might have gotten fouled twice there. <laughs> well, her, she got fouled that first time, but then her teammate Gaffney. Candela. Gaffney putting the moves on her Nina Nunez. <laughs> nice little three-woman weave there, but yeah. without moving as O'Connell has it. Ten to shoot. Hulm. Inside to Jana. Now, almost a triple team. <laughs> oh, nearly a triple team, nearly a foul as well by Bunyan. Either way, ending in transition. Two on one and, and a foul. On, yeah, ending. <laughs> Faye ending. Woo! It was two on one, but Faye ending didn't care. And you could see what it means yeah. there to Al Shabri. Yeah. And you could see there how disappointed Jacob Lloyd was. But yeah. either way. <laughs> No, such strength there. And she finishes really high off the glass, which is one of her best parts, because she's got a float game, mm. mid-range, and she finishes strong. And three points. She's got Absolutely, it Absolutely, yeah. Solid three-point shooter as well, but uh, showing her inside game there. It even had Vince McCauley, the game day MC, on his feed as well. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> Vince McCauley needs no introduction to British basketball. As Faye Endine makes the free throw. And, and Al one. Shabri who trailed by double digits in the first quarter, now leads 33-28. Nice pass from Courtney Gray. Good kick. O'Connell, that's a long two. Her feet were on the line, but she makes it. Man, nothing worse than a long two, even if it's just on the line. <laughs> Good pass inside, though. It's so fun to see all these back-to-basket players all at once. Lisk passes it to Gaffney. Ainge with six on the shot clock. Gaffney has to put up something. 
Shot clock winding Ooh. down, makes oh. a bit of room, and Valky Cleave collects the loose ball after the missed layup. Good move, though. She went right for her reverse. Velky Cleave now going the other way, and ending rebounds. Ending. Looking for a bit of options, goes it alone herself. Came off Courtney Gray last, so Team Blue will pick up the ball. Man, three layouts back and forth, but all a little bit different tricks. Not quite finishing, but they're looking good. <laughs> Ending. Driving at Hernanda Nunez and gets oh. the floater to go. There's another of Faye Ending's offensive repertoires in action. Wow, she focused so hard there. She got contact in the air, but still followed and willed the ball into the hoop. Final minute of this second oh. quarter as the ball goes out of bounds. A lot of right at Zaya Taylor's uh, feet. He Do was I... fun to interview earlier. He has a lot of energy. He's like, I'm tired. I'm retiring. I want to end on a good note. I was like, all right, that sounds great. The stories we could tell you about Zaya Taylor, I could tell you. <laughs> we'd write a book about it. Yana Sauska puts in a three. Ooh, in the corner. She's like, put me in the three-point contest. <laughs> Al Shabri now with an eight-point lead with 30 seconds left in the half. A lot to do for Team Hulme right now. Hernina Nunez passes it straight to Ezekiel Lisk. And Taylor Gaffney could break for Team Blue. Man, again, a lot of contact. I like that the refs are letting them play, and it's been consistent both sides, but there is a lot of bumps on the hip, on the arms. I think the players are like, okay, it's not finals anymore. It's not playoffs. 10.7 <laughs> seconds remaining. Timeout called of all people by Al Shabri. So 38.30 left. I wasn't even sure whose ball that was either, but uh, we'll yeah. come back to that in just a second. But if you've just joined us on the rebound Basketball Blog YouTube channel. Welcome everyone, and thank you all for joining us. It's a celebration of National League Basketball here with this inaugural All-Star event, and an event that Chris Hughes from the Rebound Basketball Blog, who of course picks the team of the week uh, on the Basketball England website, has organized, and of course Molly yourself has organized. We've been in contact so much over the last month, and it's great to see this event finally coming to fruition as you saw a brief uh, picture of the crowd a near full house here today. Yeah, no, it's a great event that's come on again. It, so Chris Hughes was thinking about doing this for a long time, but we actually started planning this two months ago. So for it to be this successful within two months, I can't even imagine what the future holds for this event. But either way, the players are so hyped to be there and everyone has a great attitude. Well, we'll be talking probably about the, the past of the All-Star game, but we'll do that at a later stage as is we go to the final seconds of the half here. Oh. Gaffney, a three! Oh, oh it rolls out man. and out. Janosowska still has it and oh. gets it to go on the buzzer. <laughs> Katie oh. Janosowska. Ridiculous. Look at Coach Holly, she's all over the place. You can see what that means to Team Blue. A double-digit lead at the half. For Team Blue, Team Al Shabri, as she really is animated on the bench. You can see there, see what it means to her. Oh. Faye ending leading all scorers with 10 points for Team Blue. Taylor Gaffney with eight points leading the way for Team Pink, Team Hulme. It is Emily O'Connell with nine points, but Katie Janosowska, we spoke about her commitment mm -hmm. to St. Francis, Brooklyn. What a half she has had. She has seven points and uh, a former Derby Trailblazers junior has picked up so much of her game from there, from being an under 16 international. There's yeah. El Shabri letting out <laughs> Janosowska know. But um, a great end to the half and Team Blue lead by 10. Lead by 10. They were almost down 10 in yeah. the beginning of the half. They were. But but they're working way together. We talked about this earlier. They are starting to feel each other out. They're getting way better connection, even though that Team Pink is down by 10. Those post players on the inside are trying to really figure each other out. Yeah. So while we've got uh, half time, it's not going to be a 15 minute half like it is traditionally. It's going to be um, 10 minutes right now. Just going to you know, quickly just get your thoughts on this first half. The, the first women's all-star game that I can remember in recent memory. There's been a few men's all-star games, yeah. but for the women, 
what a landmark experience. Emily O'Connell got the first points of that All-Star game, and it's yeah. just gone from strength to strength. Absolutely. You know, the nice thing, I've been watching this game, it's been so fun to watch because you have the best athletes in the league, you have the best IQ in the league, and all the talent all in one. So it's just nice to see all the good attitudes. It just looks so fluid out there, and the passes, the long court, the behind the backs, it's just so nice to see it. And just sometimes it's good to take a break from the bad basketball and just watch good basketball. <laughs> And speaking of breaks, we're going to take a short break just to recover ourselves yeah. <laughs> right now. Seven minutes, oh, just under um, eight minutes until the third quarter begins. So we'll be back in around five minutes time.
and welcome back to the Solent Sports Complex here in Southampton, the inaugural Rebound All-Stars event. And it is Team Blue, Team El Shabri, leading Team Pink, Team Hulme, 40 to 30. John Hobbs, Molly Danielson alongside me. And Molly, we're going to start this... Um, third quarter by talking about another all-star event that right. is happening showcasing the best in the under 19s to have in this country um, hosted and organized by Sam Nita and Hoops Fix it is the Hoops Fix all-star classic taking place at the Crystal Palace Sports Center an iconic British basketball venue and several players playing today will be taking part in that all-star event um, Fat Man Ajana will be taking part in, in that. Um, Fumia Modi, Katie Anasowska, Emily O'Connell, Izzy Ozzy Momadou, um, Faye Endine, Izzy Bunyan, a whole plethora of talent competing in Crystal Palace in just a few weeks' time. Yeah, no, so I was talking, I actually didn't know about what it was. I am new here. I, I'm, yeah. only, I'm one year in. But I was talking in the group chat, everyone said, congratulations to Faye Endine. I was like, what'd you do, Endine? Like, just talking to Faye about it. She's really excited. <laughs> She's been there before, but I, no surprise that half these players are in two All-Stars. I mean, when I first came here, I found out that the WNBL also has underage, like under-18s. Yep. I was like, oh, really? Okay, let's see what they got. They got a lot of talent. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's going to be a really fun game to watch. It is going to be so much fun. Keep checking uh, Sam Nita and HoopsFix.com for all the info. Tickets are still available. You can get them via HoopsFix.com now. But we are just about to start the third quarter in the inaugural Rebound All-Stars event. And Team Blue leads 30 to 40. Here we go. And it's been a great start, hasn't it? Yes, absolutely. Again, the, my favorite part is just watching everyone smile. Everyone's having a really good time cheering each other. If someone, if someone gets scored on, they're like, man, like, I knew you are going to do that. <laughs> It's the most competitive scrimmage that's not a scrimmage, I guess. <laughs> exactly. I'm not going to say it like that, though, because that just... It's competitive. Let's just put it that way. Dean putting the moves on Janosowska. Driving, and Amber Dean will go to the foul line. And a player who registered the only quadruple double in the WNBL this season. That was uh, back in February. and The MVP, Amber and Dean. Exactly, the MVP of this season. I'm not surprised by that choice at all. When I saw that come up, you know, you're waiting for it on the Basketball England. I was really happy for Amber Dean. She's so fun to talk to, but she's so competitive on the court, but she can leave it off the court when you're done with the game and give you a good high five and things like that. 14 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists, 10 steals against the London Lions. So Fat Man Ajana will most certainly not forget that day. <laughs> she can attest. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, good cut in there. And there list. is Amber Dean doing what she does best, getting the ball away and stealing it. Averaged five steals this season. Oh, my god. The one-legged jumper oh. rattles in. <laughs> that was dirty, Dean. Oh, my gosh. Amber Dean. Wow. That was nice. Showcasing why she is regular season MVP. And Taylor oh, Gaffney, Gaffney answers right back. She's like, I can do something, too. <laughs> O'Connell. It's almost a case of you go, I go. The perfect all-star game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here is Amber Dean. Step back two. And that's off to the right. Hulman and O'Connell were, um, excuse me, and uh, Bunyan, I think, were battling for it. Yana Salska in rhythm. Hulman with the rebound. O'Connell. Here is Dean. Round oh! the back pass. Oh, Izzy Ozzy Momadou couldn't quite hang on to it. She still has it. Media double team down there again. <laughs> O'Connell, big three off the back iron. This time her feet were behind the uh, the arc, so that was a three-point attempt. Jana Salska, Lisk, Hulm rebounds. Hume is really gathering up the rebounds right now. She's like, you know what? Maybe I'm not getting all the shots up, but I'll get all the boards <laughs> for Team Pink. O'Connell inside to Hulme and Hulme scores. <laughs> That's seven points now for Katrin Hulme. Man, I would love to play with Katrin Hulme. I'm telling you, she would be my, I'm just going to say it now, but definitely the only person WNBL I'd want to play with right now, for sure. So smart, so positive, such a great player. She'd make you better. Ooh. Inside. <laughs> yeah, that is an answer. Lisk was looking you. for the foul, but she gets the bucket anyway. I'm with that. Definitely an one situation right there. O'Connell, bit of a physical back and forth to start this third period. 
O'Connell looking for options and Amber Dean couldn't quite hang on to it. Asking a little too much, I believe, of uh, Amber Dean as the ball goes out of bounds. Too strong of a pass. Got to yeah. get out of the weight room. <laughs> as Lindsay Clary comes into the game and Fumia Modi will take a seat. Izzy Bunyan coming in for Katie Janosowska. It's kind of nice. There's so many different ball handlers, so you kind of get to see a different position highlighted all the time with all these players. Lisk putting the moves on Fumia Modi, nearly blocked or nearly stolen by Amber Dean. A foul was called, and it was on Amber Dean, <laughs> who just looks at Tim Brown. Really? <laughs> I love her facial expressions. <laughs> Ainge looking for options, finds it in Lisk. Back to Ainge. Catch and shoot, and that wow, goes. Wow, so quick. She had such a quick release there, went to one step. Wow, she came right out of the baseline, too. Those are the scary shooters that can inbound it. You don't know where they're going next. Goldsby. Hulme, who can shoot the three and hey, gets it to go. Post Mafia. <laughs> Katrin Hulme with her first three of the day. Oh, that was a quick release, too. Man, they're really showing out their skills right now. Oh, well, Robin Ainge <laughs> nearly, nearly traveled with it. She had a smile on her face as she gave it right up to Amber Dean. And Amber Dean will go to the foul line. Gaffney's arguing that should have been a jump ball. I need to see that on replay. I didn't quite see it. Oh, you can hear, <laughs> you can hear Coach Ollie. I'm really just talking to the ref i don't think she has any leeway here coach alia like has it. coach alia has been the most <laughs> vocal coach i think not just in the all-star game but also in the league right now today my goodness me coach lloyd is gonna watch this back and be like man <laughs> i'm getting overshadowed over here by coach <laughs> lufra nice. lufra might need an assistant coach for next season alia might even take that ahead of playing Hey, player coach is a real thing here. <laughs> there so. they are, absolutely. Gaffney on the catch and shoot. That misses everything. And Fatmana Jenna will collect the rebound. She has six points at the moment. Goldsby with the offensive board. Oh, she was open there. Amber Dean was wide open, decides to dance her way inside. Shot clock down to six. Hulme, shot clock winding down. Goldsby, short. And Ainge picks up the rebound. Gaffney. Gaffney oh, is oh. wide open. <laughs> Pass inside to Ainge, who misses the handle, and it'll be Team Pink's ball. Man, the nice thing, too, about this, we were talking about the IQ. They're just doing one step ahead already, but mm. the player already knows it. Like that last pass beforehand, Cat knew exactly where to go, and they're passing it to Hume there. And then the same thing happened with Gaffney and Ainge. Ainge, excuse me. <laughs> Goldsby inside to Hulme. That's too easy for Katrin Hulme. <laughs> she can't tell Gaffney, get off me. I know where I'm at. I'm in my paint. <laughs> <laughs> One of Hulme's favorite spots inside. Ainge. Bunyan. Ooh, Bunyan long with her three. Halfway through this third quarter, it's a seven point lead for Al Shabri. Inside, blocked by Bunyan. That's a second block now for Izzy Bunyan as O'Connell was going for the layup. Bunyan is so calm out there. I really like her demeanor. She's, she's a nice balance to the emotional players. Not in a bad way, but the players that wear their heart on their sleeve. <laughs> Don't forget to follow Rebound Basketball Blog at Rebound. There's loads of behind the scenes going on here at the Rebound All-Star event today, and it's all on their social media pages. Follow them, check out what is happening here today. So much fun here in Southampton, and we've still got a dunk contest and a men's All-Star game to come. I know you're particularly looking forward to watching the men's All-Star game as Endine goes inside and scores. Yeah, no, I'm excited to watch. You know, to be honest with you, I'm more of a fan of the women's side. I couldn't Naturally. tell you much about the men's side, but I am excited after having that interview with Taylor, of course, and all those things. I'm excited to see what the energy is going to be for that game compared to this one. And for the dunk contest, we have one of our special guest judges, Wake Forest and former Worthing Thunder 
and Surrey Scorchers star Cameron Hildreth is in the building oh. and will be one of the judges for the dunk contest today. It'll be great to have Cameron in attendance, of course, completing his first year at Wake Forest, such a prestigious school that's produced some of the best NBA talent, most notably Chris Paul, Tim Duncan, mm -hmm. as Velky Cleave Timmy has Lee. it. Jenna puts Ooh. in a three oh. and gives, <laughs> gives the eye right there to Al Shabri. Oh, it's on. <laughs> oh my Going God. Going right out them though is Taylor Gaffney. And at the other end, Al Shabri now. It's a bit of a oh banter match going on there between the two. Oh my Here is Jenna again. She'll go inside. Okay, I've got to explain the story really quick. <laughs> this As is... Fumi Amodi will come into the game for Team Blue, and I think um, Candina Nunez will come in for Reading. It's all yours. If you remember, we are watching the All-Star Draft, and you had Alia and Katrin, you know, talking about the players they want to get there to choose for their team, and we get to the end. There's two players left, and Alia goes, i got to be honest, I'm not going to pick... Fatma because <laughs> she called her a gremlin on the court. <laughs> She's like, just for that, I'm holding the grudge. <laughs> Catherine Hulme was happy with that. I was like, I'll pick her. That's fine. I've got this. Clary put, nearly put in a floater and Jana with the rebound. <laughs> that was too No good. love lost between those two. Stolen by Gaffney. Oh, well contact. Gaffney inside. Ball pings out of bounds and will stay with Team Blue. Wow, Gaffney, they were just getting hit left and right. <laughs> no easy pathway to the hoop. It's quite incredible, actually, oh. as Gaffney nearly oh. knocked down a three. It's quite incredible. Both teams actually shooting a reasonably decent percentage from the field, <laughs> around 36%. Both teams in this game. Hernida Nunez short with her three. Oh, Karpova. Christina Karpova into the game. 14 pink misses her attempt. It's a battle for the loose ball, but it's picked up and a foul has been called. I think that was Clary that had the loose ball and the foul, I believe, was on Karpova and it was. That's her second. It's getting a lot more physical right now. There's, I feel like the refs now have to call a foul because if that keeps happening in the paint, you got to kind of calm it down from there. Well, as is tradition in all-star games, we've seen it in many all-star games in the NBA over the years. It really gets a little more serious in the second half, especially in the fourth quarter. My goodness me, the intensity will be at another level, I assume, in the fourth period, especially as the game is quite close right now at six points, the difference. And yeah. Team Hulm had the lead for the majority of the first quarter, and El Shabri came back and has now enjoyed the lead from the midway point of the second quarter onwards. Velky Cleave. Jana short with her attempt but her gets rebound. her own rebound Courtney Gray and that's off as well and Endine comes away with it it's one on three though at the moment and Team Blue will now come back for offense here is Clary Ooh, and up and move. under beautiful move from Lindsay Clary wow a little shake and bake there Charles Barkley would be proud <laughs> <laughs> Clary now has six points and Al Shabli's lead is up to eight. Gray. Gray Good inside cut. to Velky Cleave. Velky Cleave blows the layup. And here is Gaffney. A little sullen action right now. Gaffney dancing her way around Karpova, puts up a three. Big rebound there from Izzy Bunyan, but good defense from Courtney Gray, and the jump ball has been called. You don't hear that in All-Star games often. No. <laughs> Nevertheless, an inaugural rebound All-Stars event. As Taylor Gaffney takes a seat, Katie Janosowska comes back in. Here's something you don't see that uh, you can just about see on the bench is the uh, table officials are being asked if they want a slice of pizza. You got to feed everyone at these why, events. Why, why not us? Why, why not, not us? us? <laughs> why not us? Especially you just, up here doing Just because we're day. commentating doesn't mean we're not hungry. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> here is Janusowska. 
Endine. I need a Nunez with really smothering D on Endine. Oh. Endine, though, answers and lays it in. Oh, the turn back over her shoulder is so nice. She was able to get all the way from the perimeter to the hoop. Candela Hernida Nunez has had a great season with the Rockets this season as Jana strings a oh. three. <laughs> I didn't see her point this time, Dahlia. No, no pointing, all business. <laughs> so typical of the London style of basketball. Inside, Jana Salska, good defense from Jana. Great rebound there by Bunyan Cleary. in the corner for three, misses everything. Oh, good hustle. And fan manager Janus diving for the loose ball. Hustle plays. We love hustle plays. And this is so typical of Lon the London style of basketball. So tough, so tenacious. Not giving up on any loose ball, no matter what the competition is. Ending against Karpova. Oh, good pass. Amodi inside, up and under, misses the layup. Janna with a big rebound. That was a nice pass, though. A perfect bounce pass right to her hands when she was driving. Or, excuse me, cutting to the hoop. Hey, there Big goes three for Karpova. There we go. She's smiling. <laughs> That's Karpova's first points of the game. And almost everyone has scored on the court. Endy nearly answered back. Rebound by Velky Cleave. Good kick. Karpova oh. stepped back. Oh, nearly was going for the three there, but uh, Izzy Bunyan had other ideas. Jana, she'll put up another three. That's off the back iron. Oh, wow. Good steal by Clary. And Clary with the steal. Whoa. Ending final seconds of this third period. Clary, a floater. No good. Oh, she, she tries oh. to tip it in and it doesn't go. And that ends a really entertaining third quarter. And Team Al Shabri still leads, but by four this time. 56. 52. Oh my goodness, the score, I didn't even realize is within four. <laughs> and away from the game, I'm not sure if this is me, I don't know if I put my foot in this, but you've now got pizza and they've left me out. The irony is I can't really? eat it. <laughs> this is for you, John, you can have, I, I, I don't I can't want eat that it. now, that's your pizza. I can't eat it, so it's all you. <laughs> I can't eat dairy. <laughs> They're trying to set me up for failure over here. <laughs> One of the lead Sonar TV. We've got to give a shout out to Sonar TV. who have done a fantastic job all season of providing coverage here at Solent Sports Complex. They're doing so here today as well. But if Maria, who is the lead for Sonar TV, is putting pizza in your hands and not mine, we're having problems we already. We know who the favorite is. Right. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just proves what I'm worth, I guess. Either way, let's, let's go away from that. So, <laughs> Faye Endine leading all scorers right now with 14 points. Taylor Gaffney, her Solent Kestrels teammate, has 13. Fat Mana Jana and Katrin Hjorm having great third quarters leading the way yeah. for Team Pink with 12 each. All to play for, though, yeah. in this fourth period. Gap is four. Yeah, the gap is four. It's not too big right now. But the thing is, I couldn't even tell you who was the lead scorer because it's so fluid in the game. I don't feel like anyone's taking too many shots. No one's, and the nice thing, no one's being selfish on the court at all. Mm. Everyone's getting a shot attempt up. We just need three more people to score and then I feel like it's a really good day. Well, it's a good day either way, but I want to see everyone get some points on the board. Absolutely. Candina Hermene, Hermeda Nunez. And Chinwe Awuzi are the only two players not to have scored so far, but they have contributed in other aspects on the stat sheet. But um, you'd like to think for Team Pink, get them the ball, get them some points on the board. They've done it all season long for their respective teams. Candena, Hermena Nunez, no doubt about it, one of the leaders of the Reading Rockets offense this season. Good defense there by Hume inside. Oh, Bishop also has not scored. Absolutely, Eleanor that. Bishop oh. still hasn't scored. She gets her shot blocked. By her own teammate. <laughs> and a two is good for Fat Mana Jana. I love her energy. She's feeling it. She's so into it. She's missing it. She hasn't played Absolutely. playoffs, so it's been the month probably for them yeah. not playing. Eleanor Bishop, another of the last minute changes to the roster lineup. Here she is on the ball now, <laughs> diving on the loose ball. <laughs> Bishop just laughing at herself. Lisk puts in hey! a two. There we go, nice shot by That Lisk. was money from the moment it left her hands, as Amber Dean has it. Jana to Goldsby. 
Goldsby inside. That's a beautiful move, and it goes. Ridiculous finish. She knew exactly what she was doing, how she mm. got to the center of the key, and she focused and turned her body in the air so she could square up. She's so athletic. She has such a good vertical. I want to see what her vertical is down there. <laughs> well, the dunk contest will be following this matchup. Good steal there from Dean as Gaffney was going for an easy layup. Bishop. Gaffney puts oh. up a three and knocks hey! down a three. She knows it. She knows it. <laughs> she got fourth. trapped under there, too. That's a fourth three-pointer as well for Taylor Gaffney. Four for 12 from downtown in this game. Hulme at the baseline. Gets the head fake, goes up, misses the two. Good move there, Dia, across the paint. Gaffney in transition, blocked oh! by Dean. Amber Dean with the rejection. Oh, they're actually going to call it a foul. Oh, they've, they have called it a foul. They did. Both of them oh. look like, oh, kind of surprised on both sides. <laughs> oh, either way. Either way. <laughs> it was good. I thought it was good defense from Amber Dean. Obviously, the referees saying that was not the case and Taylor Gaffney will go to the foul line. She's been a good three-point shot, good uh, three-throw shooter all season long. The most consistent on our team for sure. Absolutely and a player who exploded in the playoffs leading Solent to the final in Manchester a couple of weeks ago. Here she is on the ball now collecting her own rebound off the miss. Eleanor Bishop who oh, obviously <laughs> another foul has been called. Of course, Eleanor Bishop, with a smile on her face, yeah. as uh, she was involved in the three-point shootout earlier. Yana Salska. Lisk driving at Hulme. Good defense from Katrin Hulme. Yeah, really good lob verticality there. And O'Connell... Kept it in bounds, but uh, Taylor Gaffney had it, and I think an obvious oh. foul has been called there. <laughs> <laughs> and Fat Man Jana wants an unsportsmanlike as well. They're getting into it. No fights, please. No fights. It's getting physical out there, but this is so typical of uh, All Star games, especially in the fourth quarter. It gets a little bit physical and a little bit more competitive at this stage as Yana Salska on three fouls will take a seat. Coach Ollie is subbing her out saying, hey, hey, we don't want to get you intentional. We're going to sit you down and calm you down. <laughs> <laughs> Hulme drives at Lisk. Goldsby putting Ooh. the moves on Ainge, driving inside. Good defense there. A lot of body I think that was from Lisk, and here is Endine. Gaffney, nice oh, pass goodness. inside. Oh, Lisk, lost Lisk at the other end couldn't hang on to it, and Katrin Hume <laughs> on the floor gets up. <laughs> She's laughing at herself. She's like, oh, my body's hurting on that one. <laughs> Amber Dean inside nice gets it to go. With the left. As Velky Cleave will check in at the next dead ball, Ainge. Ainge from the foul line, and that's money. God, money shot. These younger players, her and Ending, just go into that one dribble and just finish so well in the mid-range. Kai Walker and Charles Aqua Davis getting ready for <laughs> the dunk contest that will follow this game. Jana, that's a long two. Hume with the rebound. And inside it goes, and Fat Mana Jana collects and scores. And referee's now saying that'll be a warning as she touched the ball on the way down. She definitely slapped that one out of bounds, though. She's definitely feeling it. <laughs> 13 points for Fat Manajana, the London Lions two player. As Eleanor Bishop takes a seat, Izzy Bunyan comes into the game for Team Blue. Izzy Bunyan just one for six from the field, however, has three, bound, three rebounds and two blocks to a name. In fact, actually just one block, according to the statistics. Here is Lisk. Lost the handle, collected it. Ainge puts up a three, in and out. Good rebound. A big rebound, and on the follow, Lisk puts it in. Yeah, that can't happen to Pink. If they want a chance right now, Team Pink needs to rebound and box out a lot more underneath. And they don't even have their, their tallest players in yet for Team Blue. Inside to oh. Hulme. Hulme had an open lane. Jana puts up a three and oh, knocks it down. She wants the three instead. One ah. possession game. 66-63, halfway through the fourth. Ainge kicks it out to Endine. 
Lisk. Gaffney. Gaffney driving. Gaffney, oh, yeah. I think, was fouled by Dean and was. Oh, another one. That's her third one in this quarter. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Gaffney's loving it though. She goes, how can I just get Dean out? That'll help us win. <laughs> <laughs> Timeout has been called. Ooh, three-point game. And it is a three-point game. Yeah, Ooh. it's all to play for with 5.36 remaining. Fat Manajana leads all scorers with 19. Well, she led all. She led the scoring last season. Only um, Nunez of Worcester beat her to it but in this game she is the leading scorer in the league so it's not surprising right. that she's leading the way here today 19 points for her so far well team pink is kind of relying on her and hume right now to just get the offense going not that they don't have a lot of offensive threats on the team but you could tell that they're constantly feeding these players because they know if we want to stay in this we got to get who's hot and the hot hand is definitely with jenna right now but she's also energetic so the energy is really building their momentum too All to play for with 5.36 remaining. Following on from this, keep it locked on the Rebound YouTube channel. We have the dunk contest at 5.15. And then following on from that will be the men's all-star game at 6 p.m. To round up what has been a fantastic day of action so far at the Rebound all-star event here in Solent. It's been a brilliant day and... We've got to give continuous praise to the man himself, Chris Hughes, on producing this incredible event at such a short space of time. It's only taken two months, but a two months well spent. Yeah, <laughs> well spent, hard, hard business. <laughs> but the other thing too is Hughes is doing this without any payment too. He's doing this yeah. on his own passion for the game. Absolutely, a, a full-time worker with the NHS as well, Chris Hughes. So. Mixing his 10, 12 hour shifts with the NHS to you know, organize this is absolutely special. And suffering with long COVID as well. I was gonna say that's yeah, another impact. Yeah, O'Connell inside. So no doubt uh, we're gonna call on his employers at the NHS to give him some annual leave, I think, well, after I think this. So. <laughs> Dean inside. Oh! Nice pass! Oh, no! Catherine Young blows the layup though. Oh my gosh, that pass. Oh, is that ridiculous. would have been something. Hume oh. knew as well that she <laughs> that deserved better. Even Hume knew it. Yeah, she was just oh man. Ending nearly made them pay for three. Jana rebounds. Whew. That was like her fourth pass today. That's just been so nearly nice. nearly stolen by Faye Ending. O'Connell picks it up on the oh, spin. What a move wow. from Emily O'Connell. Wow, ridiculous. What a move. So fluid. Oh. It's a one-point lead now for Team Hulm, and straight away, Faye Endine restores the lead for Team Blue. Oh, this game, four minutes left. We're back and back. <laughs> Jana inside. Oh, wow. Inside, it goes to Hulm, who puts I, it in. Get in it again. She's like, I'm going to trust you again. I'll get you another pass. <laughs> 16 points for Katrin Hulm. You know, Hume told me before the draft, he goes, the mo main player I really want to play with is Amber Dean. So it's really fun oh, to see Oh, absolutely, them yeah. Bunyan. Oh. To Gaffney. Bunyan, Dean. a big three. Oh, it's off the back iron, and Velky Cleave rebounds. Velky Cleave gives it up to O'Connell. 3.25 remaining. O'Connell. Oh. Jana thought about the three instead drives inside. Oh, she gets open. Six to shoot. Dean. Team Pink have got to put up something. Hulm inside, up and under, misses everything. There's a lot of opportunities there for all those players to score. It kind of shows how they want to keep the ball moving. But definitely need to pick a time. <laughs> Absolutely, attack. yeah. Taylor Gaffney on the ball. Hulm. Team Hulm leads by one. Bunyan. Ending with seven on the shot clock. Ending driving at O'Connell, misses the ball, has to put up something. Bunyan, that was partially blocked by Jana. Yeah, 
time violation, you know, there was no hitting the rim there. Usually I trust Bunyan with that shot too, but I just think the defense was really smart to get that tip. Timeout called. Well, in fact, no, excuse me, substitutions are coming in. And... So it's 2.39 remaining. Team Hume is in the lead with one. While wow, this game is just going back and forth, it's gonna go all the way to the end. <laughs> O'Connell. Oh, good pick and roll there. And oh, oh and there's Izzy Ozzy Momadou. How is she just now in the game? I'm just realizing this. They're really saving that weapon till the end. Is that planned by Coach Lloyd? Clary on the step back jumper from the baseline. And rebound by Velky Cleave. Huel. Velky Cleave, top of the key, back iron it goes. Oh, good shot for her, though. Oh, man, it's coming to the end. Last Absolutely. two minutes. Absolutely, Yana Salska. Yana bodies her way inside, misses the layup. Ozzy Momadou, another rebound. Oh, Team Purple's getting into it. They got players standing on the end there. Or Team Pink, excuse me. <laughs> Six rebounds for Izzy Ozzy Momadou, if you're counting at home, by the way. As uh, the pass there, asking too much of a woozy. It's so hard. Who do you play at the end of the game here when you have so many all-stars? There's so many people in there, and they're all closers. They've all been closers on their team. I bet that's so hard as a coach to figure out who you want to have close. Yana Sauska. Ooh, mid -range. A pull-up jumper in and out. And Ozzy Momadou, excuse me, another rebound. Yeah, she's coming at the right time. Absolutely. I think that was planned by Coach Lloyd. <laughs> Still just two points, but uh, making up for it in rebounds, just like she did at the playoff final. Hulm driving at a Modi. Ooh, tough pass, but good idea. Wow, a lot of contact. Yana Sauska comes up with it. A lot of contact, absolutely. Final minute. Team Hjorm leads by three. The oh! game is tied with Whoa. that three from Ainge. <laughs> right at the end there. <laughs> Ainge Robin Ainge from downtown. Woo. <laughs> oh, man. I, bet, I can't tell if the players are too stressed or having fun still. Ozzy Momadou nearly fouled by Clary. Gets it back and misses the layup. Oh, good Izzy Ozzy out. Momadou has it. Double team immediately. It's getting intense on the court now as Jana misses the layup. Well, excuse me, a woozy misses the layup. Oh, 20 seconds left. <laughs> There's only a second differential between shot clock and game clock. Fans are now on their feet. Oh, no. <laughs> Al Shabli is telling everyone to roar on Team Blue. Gaffney, final seconds. Gaffney for two. Oh. No good. O'Connell oh rebounds, oh and we're going to overtime. <laughs> overtime. <laughs> we are going to overtime here in our first women's all-star game. <laughs> I just can't believe this is so ridiculous. <laughs> An incredible game to kick off the all-star games if you discount the the challenges before that, yeah. but the game is tied at 71. We're going to overtime. Taylor Gaffney with 17 points leading the way for Team Al Shabri. She had a chance to win it at the buzzer, but her shot agonizingly oh. dropped out. I was hoping you'd see it on the replay. I think this is just game highlights of what has, been, bounces, what has been a thrilling game. There's no doubt about that. Katrin Hulm with 16, leading all the scorers, Fatmana Jana with 19 for Team Pink. But our first women's all-star game for rebound is going to overtime. I really thought she was about to pull a Kawhi Leonard there in the playoffs where it bounced a few times and gets back in. You can just tell on her face she wanted it to drop. But Cleary was setting her a screen at the end because she knew Gaffney was the one to take that last shot. But really, we have to say, Robin Ainge had that three to get the tie Big game. three, absolutely. That's what tied it. That was with just under a minute left. Yes. 
And that's why we have overtime. Man, these fans are getting a great price or a great value for their ticket. I tell you what, for an entire day, ten pounds, what a bargain of you know, a feast of British basketball here in Southampton and they are enjoying it. They were on their feet for that final possession, but here we go, overtime begins. Here is Goldsby. <laughs> they're into it while wow, they're starting this off hot. Jana misses the oh! three and on the follow with Shulm. Post Mafia coming with that rebound. <laughs> 18 points for Katrin Hulm. Amody Ooh. driving, finds a bit of room and scores. I actually thought that was a pretty good charge. If they were calling more, I think that might have been called. I think she was planted in the lane and not behind the RA, of course. Just four points. That's a first field goal, actually, for the playoff final MVP. Oh, man, people are getting aggressive. I like it. Playing and now hard. it's now it's getting competitive. You saw this is traditional, isn't it? In all star games, the first few possessions, <laughs> the first half or so is merely just getting into your rhythm, having fun, enjoying, enjoying the moment. Now it's getting serious and the competitive nature. There's no smiles. This is now all business. No, no smiles at all. Gaffney at the foul line. Doesn't get it to go. Hjulm with the rebound. This is such a good opportunity, though. Five more minutes is totally what these players mm. deserve to have more fun on the court. Well, maybe it's not fun right now. But Hjulm <laughs> misses the ball and good collects hustle. it back. Is Yossi Momadou another rebound? Oh, you got to get out of the key. And a whistle has gone. Yeah. And yeah, three second violation has been called. That rebound, by the way, from Katrin Hjulm at the other end just a second ago actually has given her a double-double of yeah. 17 points, 10 rebounds. She also has five assists as well. I'm not, not surprised at all. Not even just the captain. The captain's showing out, but she's working hard out here. Do you know she's also an Iron Woman? She is, absolutely. Well, it is kind of an embarrassing story in Manchester. Oh, no. I was filling up with petrol, like half asleep while I'm doing it, as Katie Anasowska blocked Ooh. by Izzy Ozzy Momadou, and it'll go out of bounds. And as I was filling up with petrol, I see speeding along and jogging up the road, Katrin Hulm, <laughs> literally waving at me going, are you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm just getting petrol. And literally I felt so old. <laughs> <laughs> a double team immediately there on the block. They're really starting to figure out that Hulm, if she gets the ball, it's not gonna be good for them. By the way, the drive to get petrol was only 30 seconds. That makes it even worse for me. <laughs> Goldsby misses the layup. Good hustle by everyone being so physical. Goldsby has it again. Bumps. Oh, they give it to her. They do. I think that was, was that on, was that Eleanor Bishop or Robin Ainge? It was Robin Ainge. This is exactly how Goldsby won that game though in the mm. quarterfinals. All she did was just keep attacking because she knew if she got to the line, she's putting her team in that winning position and was able to get that win over Cardiff in the quarterfinals. So Goldsby at the foul and misses the first. Oh man. Free throws have not been as uh, consistent today as we said earlier. <laughs> They're trailing off a little bit. Oh, free throws, especially in, in all-star games, not traditionally the, the more vital as they are as the game goes on, but it's definitely meaning a lot today. Team Hulm is 9 for 14 from the foul line and very similar to Team Shal Al Shabri. They're 9 for 13 right now. 3.05 <laughs> remaining and the players are going to do their own moisture technician work on the floor. <laughs> Ooh. Jana, nine on the shot clock. Goldsby driving. O'Connell baseline jumper, wow. and that's good. She has been so nice today. That's 13 points now for Emily O'Connell, and Team Hulm now has a two-point lead with 2.43 remaining. Bunyan oh. answers back for three. Quick three. Oh, they gave her a two for that. I'm pretty sure she was behind the oh, line. Oh, her feet were on the line, the referee said. Yeah, so oh, the game is tied man. at 75. I thought El Shabri had the lead on that attempt. 
Jana. Five to shoot for Fat Man of Jana. Oh, Goldsby, the... that's a three. That oh! goes. Oh, silent killer right there. And Team Huel now leads by three. Final two minutes. Ainge almost dribbling into trouble there. Has it back. Ending a mismatch with Izzy Ozzy Momadou. Clary. Got to put up something. Clary with the turnaround jumper. Big rebound by Hulm. Good rebound. That's Good 11 rip. rebounds now for Katrin Hulm. Goldsby driving. Goes glass. Oh, off ball goes out of bounds, and it will be a team blue oh, ball. Oh, bad call. Wow, that's a series. <laughs> Again, I know we should not comment on the refs. I, I will say it for myself. They did call a foul there on Goldsby, and then it went out of bounds on Blue, and they gave it back to yeah. Blue. I don't know who's paid. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're, not, we're not paid by anyone. So Who are you okay. supporting? Either way. <laughs> so much for you being down the middle. Here is Endy. Puts up a three. Oh. Misses everything. Yana Salska keeps the ball just about. Uh, you thought kept the ball in bounds, but it goes out of bounds, and... Uh, Team Pink will recover. To they lead fair, by three. The calls have been very physical on both sides, though. So I guess it's been very consistent, which I can appreciate as a player and as a spectator. <laughs> well, this has been a fantastic advert for the game. And Chris Hughes watching on has got to be absolutely thrilled with how this game is going so oh, far. Yes. The men have got a tough act to follow coming up at 6 p.m. If I was watching this game, I'd be getting hyped for my game. Taylor Gaffney just about keeps it in. Here is Jana Salska, final minute. Jana oh. Salska, wide open three. Good kick though. O'Connell with the loose ball. Ozzy Momadou in transition, lays it up and in. Timeout called by Al Shabri. Good choice on that timeout. Good job, good job by the coach already. <laughs> Maybe it's me just saying too much, but Ozzy Momadou has been known to, you know, Dunk it a few times in transition. I was hoping. But I think she just wanted the score on that occasion, which is fair enough. But it gives Team Hulm a five-point lead with 54.9 seconds remaining, as you see some highlights of what has been an enthralling women's all-star game. Coach Ali actually said in the draft saying, hey, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna choose you, I'm expecting a transition dunk. So, you know, she's probably like, that was the opportunity. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, either way, she scored. That's what matters right now. It, it, it's all about winning right now. As um, There's some fantastic comments coming up on the YouTube channel. Katrin Hulm, a triple-double in cunning. It, yeah. Yo, who's to argue that point right now? She's still on the court, still giving it her all. It's her team. It's the players she picked. I'm feeling an MVP coming Absolutely. up. Absolutely, and it was a, a team she was confident that would get the job done here today. Ending short for a three. Good close out there though. She used her height really well and made sure not to foul because Ending had that three point foul mm. in that finals, you know, so she knows what to do when she gets there. All right, we're under about and 30 seconds. Absolutely, Amber Dean slowing the play down. You can understand as to why. <laughs> <laughs> Gaffney's saying, no, no, no. You can't get by me. <laughs> Amber Dean has showed flashes of brilliance in this game, despite only having two points. She's certainly done a lot of other things at the other end. Dean, a turnaround jumper! Oh, that goes! That was just mean! So nice. Janosowska nearly answered back. Big rebound by oh. Lisk. Really nice rebound. 13 seconds remaining. Amber Dean will look to slow it down. Jana will bring the ball up court. No foul. Jana inside, misses everything. Ozzy Momadou collects the rebound, but that should do it. Oh, the And game. that will count. Wow. Emily O'Connell's shot will count as well. <laughs> and that ends a fantastic first inaugural women's all-star game wow. sponsored by rebound, or hosted, excuse me, by rebound. And it's Team Hulm that gets the job done over Team Al Shabri. 84 to 77 
Fat Mana Jenna leading the way with 19 points. Actually didn't score in that extra period, but she led all scorers with 19 points. Katrin Hulme with a double-double of uh, 18 points and, a, and 12 rebounds. How many assists did she end with? Still so five? five, still five. five. Yeah, five. didn't get an assist in, in extra time. And wow. Taylor Gaffney with 17 points leading the way for Team Al Shabli, who concede defeat on this occasion. But it's all smiles with all the teams as Vince McCauley tells everyone to get on their feet, just appreciate what has been a fantastic game. And this is what the WNBL is all about, isn't yes. it? And Chris Hughes has just quickly changed his blue jersey to a pink jersey. <laughs> He doesn't he's all want... about the winners, isn't he? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, he's a fan himself. I mean, he's a fanatic. Mm. He loves basketball, but he loves the WNBL and the NBL. And he just wants to constantly commit to it. And actually, it's Team Selling Kestrel's got the Game Experience Award. I mean, I love that's to yeah. him, too, doing the commentary for the women's side. Absolutely. As, um, I think they will all pose now for uh, a final picture, of course, lead. So that Kestrel's photographer, Luke Simcox, getting in there. Oh, there we go, Katrin Hume with the MVP. And the MVP, MVP. going MVP. to Katrin Hume. Woo. And she receives a gift box from Kent Baller. So a pair of pair of sneakers and a gift bag are hers. Yes. Congratulations to Katrin Hume rocking the LeBron 19s, as you can see on the screen there. What a performance, though. The only player to get a double double in this game. 12 rebounds, 18 points. A fantastic effort from her today. Rightfully deserved. And again, she, again, this is a new event. And she's been so communicative. She's been so adaptable. Every time we need something, I'm like, hey, can you talk to me about this? I don't know how many voice memos I've sent her being like, hey, this has changed. Actually, can you, can you adapt to this? She's been so into it. Same with Alia. I mean, she totally deserves all of this. And she works her tail off everything she's doing. She's just a pro. Absolutely. And as you can see there, that's a lovely image right there. Even El Shabli getting in on the action <laughs> as the head coach. She's and that's what it's sorry. about. That's what it's about, though, isn't it? Just a lovely, lovely thing to have to end the game. All of them, all smiles. What a competitive game, especially in the fourth quarter and in overtime. Yes, but overtime. Just getting the job done, Team Hulme, and then all posing for a, a picture afterwards. That is so, so great to see. So much media here as well today, which is also a lot of fun. Katrin Hulme, I think, has just given back her... Uh, her gift box from Kent Ball. I don't think that's the right shoe size. I'm not sure. But uh, <laughs> she won't tell me her shoe size. I don't think she wants us to know either way. <laughs> but we will be joined by Katrin in just a second. But just your final thoughts are on what has been a fantastic women's all-star event here today. I mean, overall, the game itself was so competitive. It's really fun to watch. It was a great atmosphere. This is exactly what every program wants, to have a full crowd. And just to have it represented here at Team Solon Kestrels, I know it's not a part of it, but it's really nice to see this gym fully used and executed. Everyone loves the rims here. That's what they say. So <laughs> it's just really nice from a game standpoint that everyone got to play really hard and get all the minutes they could. But also to see the smiles and the networking. If I'm a younger player too, like we are talking about those all-stars, I would be connecting with the older players too and they get to have a connection now. So maybe if I'm in Anglia, Ruskin or Cambridge, I'm gonna go over there and talk mm. to the player there. So it's just a networking opportunity too. So Jerry Merrill is with Katrin Hulme, the rebound all-stars MVP in just a second. Hopefully we've got the cue to actually join them too as Katrin Hulme <laughs> still all smiles there. So we will join Jerry, who is with Katrin Hulme. So I'm here for the post-match interviews with the MVP of the inaugural Rebound All-Stars game, um, Kat Hume. Many, many congratulations. Not only Team Hume captain, MVP as well. Um, I know you're doing a good impression at the moment of the same colour as my shirt, but <laughs> thanks ever so much for joining us. Wow, what a game. Uh, I mean, I think actually just testament to the quality of players in the league. I'm really pleased that it was that close, because I think, like, what is an exciting game. 
game, but two, I think like the event deserved it. Um, so yeah, big shout out to everyone because I think everyone played really well. And nice having your your uh, home team coach as well, Jacob, uh, alongside you. Yeah, no, I mean it's been it's been an amazing season, obviously, for I think the league as a whole. The standards really really grown. I think for us personally, also a good season. Um, but I think it's been really nice just to finish it off. Kind of together, obviously Courtney's on, on playing as well, so it's been nice to have a bit of representation. Yeah, for sure, a great way to end, great way to end the season, and um, you know to end it on a high as well. Yeah. So what now? What now for you then? This is, is this it for the end of the season? It's a well earned rest, or? Yeah, I think so. I think this is kind of like the last basketball event, is it? Well, like I think there'll be like I'll scrimmage over the summer and things with teams back home, um, but I think yeah, just taking a break. Resting the old legs for a moment, um, and then take, yeah, taking stock and seeing what happens. And come back fit and raring to go for next season. Next yeah? season, exactly. That's the plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah awesome. Yeah. Okay. Think, yeah, definitely want to carry on playing. Um, so yeah, hundred percent. Fantastic, nice one. Okay. Can, Can I also you... just say thank yes. you? Yeah, just thank you to Chris Hughes for organising it. Obviously yourself as well for helping Aunt Molly, because like they have done an amazing job, and I think. Like, it's been a long time coming, and I think it's just testament, like, everyone's loved being here, everyone's committed to coming, so, yeah, thank you to those guys. Uh, 100%, yeah, I know there's a lot of hard work got into it, and uh, just great to see everybody here out, you know, balling out, all the fans having a great time, everybody interacting, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. OK, Cat Hume, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much thank indeed. You. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Uh, John, back to you. Thanks, Jerry. A big shout out to you, Molly, but you know, it's it's fine, whatever, I don't mind. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> but in all seriousness, it's great to to, to know that you know that Catherine will be back next season. Obviously, we're not gonna speculate on if she's staying at Angler Ruskin, if she's not, we don't know. Absolutely, you know, you know, hundred percent up in the air, but it's great that she is committed to playing next season. Oh yeah. And you know, such a testament to her, as you were we were talking about, an, an iron woman in her own yes own right and um yep not giving up and will keep playing next season that's so great to hear yeah i mean again she's one of my favorite players and now i could say we're friends because we've talked a lot and i just feel like i'm learning from her and she's nowhere near done i mean i don't know what the peak is but she she could keep playing for years and years if mm. she wants it's just a body thing right mentally it's there it's just the body but she's feeling really good i mean she totally deserves everything she had and her shout out means a lot because she knows how important this event is especially for the women's side so absolutely it's awesome definitely and while we've got the uh, camera on our screens <laughs> a big thank you to Jody Duran for giving us some pizza. <laughs> Lovely. Absolutely fantastic. Thank man. you so much for hearing our cries for uh, for pizza. And I have had I've had one slice. I'll I'll try and have another one in just a second. My thanks though to you Molly for for not just being here on commentary during this women's game but for doing everything you're doing right now. Obviously, we still have a dunk contest. We still have the men's all-star game to go. So lots of action getting ready. So we'll take a quick break now. But thank you to Molly Danielson for joining us here on commentary for today. And we'll be back in roughly three minutes time, hopefully, for the dunk contest. Stick around.